came back to finish you off. Get out of my way, you freak! Welcome back, listeners, to Scary Sci-Fi Sluts. I'm one of your hosts, Brandon. I'm Kenny. I'm Donatus. Hello. Welcome back, Donatus. And today we're going to be yeah, it's going to be reviewing back. Blade. Blade, directed by Stephen Norrington, who has also done movies like League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, and that's really only his other big budget movie. He's done some special effects work for, for other movies like Alien and Alien 3, but this dude's kind of a nobody. He hasn't really been around and hasn't done too much. Um, funnily enough, this was actually uh, a suggestion by Donatus. So thanks oh, yeah. for the recommendation, Donatus. This is definitely no a movie that I had thought about doing before, but um, seeing as we do like pretty much anything horror or sci-fi related, um, it's definitely come up, but yeah, we never actually got around to it until he made the recommendation. So now here we are. I'm glad to help. Um, so, cinematographer or director of photography for the movie was Theo Van de Sand, who has also worked on um, a couple more popular shows like Bosch, Carnival Row. Uh, Movie-wise, he's he's done cinematography work for Bad Santa 2, Grown Ups, and then Volcano. So his, his filmography is a little all over the place. I don't really understand. I haven't really seen enough of his work to see if there's any consistencies in, in style or camera work, but I don't know. Do you guys know anything about him or, or any of these shows or movies that he's done? I've seen Bad Santa 2, but that's about Grown it. Grown Up. Yeah, I haven't seen any of these movies. <laughs> Not even Grown Ups. He did cinematography for Grown Ups? <laughs> what, what was, a movie what like was, that, you think, like, do they need yeah. a cinematographer? I thought they just... I, you could, I, I just assume Adam could see Sandler a lot of the, the, Blade, uh, the Blade filming styles in Grown Ups. Mm. It was very exquisite. The, the quick cutting and the uh, the weird, like, camera fast-forwarding. Yeah. Was that in Grown Ups? I've never yeah, seen that, so... I guess so. <laughs> When they're when they're doing the basketball scene, he uh, he does a lot of roundhouse kicks. Mm, yeah, no, I probably remember seeing that in the commercial. I just feel like those kinds of editing <laughs> styles were really popular in like Catwoman, um, which was, I mean, honestly, that on his list, so he didn't do that. But never yeah. heard of Bosch. Pretty sure Bosch is the table that makes my razor, my electric razor. <laughs> um, Carnival Row. <laughs> Have I've never seen these movies, so yeah, yeah Carnival I don't know Row. Style. That's a, a newer TV series from Amazon. It came out, I think, like last year or something with okay. Orlando Bloom and Cara Delevingne, or however you say so it. So you still working oh. then. That's good. Yeah. Um, movie was written entirely by David S. Goyer, and uh, David S. Goyer is kind of a hot topic, kind of has some bad and some good to his name. So he's... He's written movies Uh-oh. like uh, he did all three of the Blade movies. He did Christopher Nolan's Batman series. He was a co-writer for, I think, all three, of, uh, for the first two. And then on the third one, he co-wrote the story, but not the screenplay. And he's done other movies like Jumper, uh, Man of Steel. He's, he's very DC oriented. He did the show Krypton. <laughs> Um, worked on Godzilla from 2014, the Constantine series that was on CW, Batman vs Superman, Terminator, uh, and he also is well known for doing a couple games too. So the the Call of Duty Black Ops series, I guess he was a, a writer for their story for a couple of those. And what's the bad press on him? Um, depending on where you look, there's certain communities like the Reddit community. Uh, that shits on him as a writer. Basically, they think he's like 
first. Like he had a couple gold golden moments, and after that, he I don't know. They think his writing's gone to the shitter. Oh, so he's he's, he's not really like in trouble. He's just no, bad. no, yeah. So I don't I don't really know enough about him to to really have an opinion. I seem to think that I mean with with this oeuvre, seems like everything's consistent. He sticks with that like, <clears throat> sci-fi, fantasy comic book style, and he has written some DC comics too. So I don't know. Don't yeah, to, I mean yeah. that's Hollywood. It's a hit or a miss. I wouldn't really blame him. Yeah. yeah. So I think um, if people on Reddit are mad, it's probably because of the fact that he's doing a lot of comic book movies, and yeah, fans of comic book movies in general can be really, really Shady. angry. Yeah, yeah that's not for, for what so, reason. I don't even know. It's like it's because the, I mean it's something you grow up with. It's like it's like if someone you know makes an adaptation of your childhood memory or movie or book or series and they bring it to Hollywood and they don't do it just right I mean it's like my guess is a lot of these people come from broken homes not a lot of love they're only cling to humanity and this sense of I would say stability came from reading fantasy reading action diving into that world Dr. and so Phil. while their lives were mm-hmm. falling apart I mean, this is just a guess, but I would say while they're like, this is my part. clinical diagnosis <laughs> <laughs> of, of an entire genre and community. But it's like, so like they're, they're one saving grace in life and, and the reason Klingon, no pun intended, is being, you know, shitted on by some writer from Hollywood. So they get really mad. That's my guess. I mean, I could be yeah, wrong. I could see that. Yeah. But I, at, I at the same time, types. what's strange is like, there are specific movies or writers that will try to to write a screenplay for a movie as if it were like a comic book. And the perfect example, I, I think, is Wonder Woman 1984. It would translate really <laughs> well to a comic book if they'd made it, that took the exact story, exactly how it was written, but did in comic book form. And it would work perfectly well in comic book form. However, putting on the big screen, the dialogue from comic books just it doesn't work it, it yeah it's not fluid, yeah. like natural dialogue and the stories don't like me, me and brandon kind of had a little conversation about this last time but you can't there are things that you can forgive in comic books that you can't in a live action movie and so i think there's there's a lot of hypocrisy like people are saying oh it's not enough like a comic book or it is too much like a comic book but then on the other hand they're also like oh well then you know, why are you writing it too much this way and not that? I don't know. It's... Yeah. It's well, there's a certain bit right. of leeway there, but yeah. some things are just too egregious to forgive when they change things <laughs> like up. What? <laughs> <laughs> egregious? <laughs> they come back weary. Like, like what? What do you, what do you, what do you lose to sleep at night over? Is it, is it, is it, is it, is that like I'll, I'll tell you something. All of Wonder Steve Woman. Trevor <laughs> teaching Wonder Woman how to fly by saying, hey, look, we're flying. <laughs> that's egregious <laughs> hey we're flying we're flying a jet plane that somehow is magically fueled up to take us across the world and back we're flying through fireworks and so you wonder woman the demigod now know how to fly it's it's yeah, let, it wasn't me, a, let me heat up my dragon ball it, it wasn't a very good movie i'll be honest but <sighs> i don't know egregious is a little much <laughs> <laughs> that what is it like? Is that a, is it a war crime? <laughs> it was treason <laughs> against America. It's my, <laughs> it's my word of the day. I'm just trying to get it in there. <laughs> he, he's got the word of the day toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> Egregious. All right, <laughs> that that work. Um, huh, so we'll need that later. <laughs> production studios for the movie were uh, Marvel Enterprises. So of course, this movie was. Um, from 1999 so this was before marvel the official marvel studios was actually established and is nowhere near what we understand today as you know disney's marvel studios um and actually what i think is really interesting is if you think about it this is the first real live action big budget live action marvel movie that pioneered the comic book movie movement um because yeah the next big one to come after this was X-Men and X-Men came out in the year 2000. 
So 1999, nothing else came before this. There were some like shitty TV, like Captain America movies and, and there was an incredible Hulk series and stuff, but not, not of this caliber, not at this budget. And I, I think that's like, people don't give this movie enough. Credit. Do you know? Like it or hate um, it, but. <clears throat> do you know if there was any talks ever to get a crossover between X-Men and Blade? No, they were, so they they kinda... were produced by different studios. Cause I think this was at the time where uh, Marvel had sold all their properties, sold the rights to use their properties to different studios. So this movie um, was produced by Marvel, New Line Cinema, Amon Ra Films, and Imaginary Forces Studios. So mm. uh, X-Men was, uh, the distribution rights were, were owned by, or sorry, not distribution, production rights were owned by Fox. So they, they couldn't. And then of course, Spider-Man and Spider-Man properties went to Sony and then, um, do you know how do you know how close they came to releasing from each other like what year or like what month in 1999 and 20, 2000 uh let's find out Cause I, yeah because i wonder if they because i mean yeah blade came first but i wonder if that was just because of release date and not because of you know well, so blade was released august 21st 1998 so that means that they probably filmed it in in 97 um let's see an x-men was released i want to say what summer 2000 x-men july 14 2000 this probably filmed a year before so probably filmed around um 99 or 98 so I'm mm. I'm assuming that this movie, you know, was the idea was there. They're you know putting it together pre-production while Blade was being released in theaters. <clears throat> so, I mean, this this really was the the first big hit superhero movie, which is yeah, I think it doesn't get enough credit. And just just I think it's probably the reason alone. is because it because it feels so different. You know, yeah. like Blade is to me reminiscent of. Like you, I think you mentioned this when we talked earlier, like John Wick, but with vampires or Buffy yeah. the Va Vampire Slayer or so, so X-Men, I feel like the tone is what carried on to other mm -hmm. feature um, superhero movies. Yeah. That's probably why Blade doesn't get brought up is because it came first, but it was such a tonal shift from what we had with Spider-Man and X-Men. Yeah, it, was um, so that, it definitely targeted a different audience, uh, yeah. which is weird if you think about it because it if you look at the movie as a whole, if it were a little more funny, it would seemingly fit into the same target audience as the Deadpool fans. Like, I'm mm, yeah, that like kind of almost slapsticky, dumb humor. That's really it feels almost like really self aware of itself. Like I think this is almost like a pre Deadpool movie, just in the way it's made and. You took yourself too seriously, I think, before to to have gotten that. I see. Um, I don't know if, it, I, I guess we'll get into it, but I, I personally, I don't think that's true. I think it, yeah, it's quite the opposite. Um, and one of the reasons why I think that is because I, I actually didn't notice this until I had watched the movie the second time to to take notes on it. Um, that Wesley Snipes was one of the producers and having that background hmm. knowledge it makes a hell of a lot more sense why the movie is yeah. how, knowing you know what happened with wesley snipes and all. Would the Wait, tax go go deeper into that uh well there was the tax evasion thing to notice if you if you want to fill in the fans well, that's all i know that. is that he 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 dodged the irs for a little while and then didn't dodge him one time oh. and he won prison <laughs> so, how long was he in prison for? But I don't know. Uh, well, he's out. He's out now. Yeah. So I think he was in yeah. for it was, it was definitely over five years. I think he was in for at least six years. I think. And mm -hmm. um, it's cool though. I've noticed that he's in a lot of movies now that uh, produced and starring Eddie Murphy. I think Eddie Murphy's giving him a lot of work mm -hmm. trying to get him back on his feet. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, I mean, well, I don't on know top of that, Anthony, why would you think? Why would you think that that would affect his filming style though? No, no. So it's also something that I've heard. Um, I remember reading a handful of stories a few years ago about him because I was, I was thinking like, 
why why haven't I seen Wesley Snipes in anything like you know what's he been up mm-hmm. to what what's his mm-hmm. deal and so I learned I learned about his his tax evasion issues but then also I guess I don't remember what movie it was on it must it, it was either one of the Blade films or another film after that apparently he was he was a total jackass on uh, the set of of whichever movie, and he was like, "Hey, look. dog." Um, I guess he was like a total diva, and there was a day of shooting where he refused to like, maybe it was multiple days where he refused to come out of his trailer just because, and. It must have been a story. I think, I think that was a Bl- wasn't that a Blade movie? I, I have a feeling it was one of the Blade movies where like Yeah. He the one that I can remember is that like he, shit. Yeah, like he would he wouldn't remember <laughs> like there was a scene where he was supposed to open his eyes up. And he didn't even do that. So they had to digitally open his eyes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was, oh my I'm god. Pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that was I'm pretty sure that was Blade. Yeah. Um I remember I remember seeing that. I don't know. I mean so do you think he had to even do the tax evasion? Like he was burning evidence or something in the trailer? And, you know, <laughs> no, what, I, what, I was, was just thinking reason? that he he got um, sort of blacklisted for his behavior oh. on set. Because I know yeah. that that does happen with certain actors. Like if they act a certain way or like a good example, um, contemporary actually is uh, Shia LaBeouf. I guess he just got booted off of Olivia Wilde's movie and she conveniently replaced him with her now boyfriend, Harry Styles. So a little Wait, bit of nepotism what? there, but I, I guess the rumor is that- Olivia Wilde? Yeah. Boyfriend is Harry Styles? Yeah. But, it, uh, wait, who's, who's Olivia Wilde again? I thought Olivia Wilde, isn't she the person that was married to Jason Sudeikis? Yeah, but I guess they didn't work out. Hmm. I, I don't know. I don't really, Aww. I don't keep well, up to sucks. date with, with celebrities. I just remember, I thought they were married. Yeah, Jason was really funny. I I don't think he's funny at all. Oh, I think okay. that they were. I, I hey, how lot. dare you, <laughs> <laughs> Brandon? Are you, are you a Jason Sudeikis fan? Yes. Yeah, I like him a lot. I think he's really funny. But I guess uh, I haven't seen. We're the Millers and stuff. Like I haven't seen these movies really. I just watched them on SNL, and I've just seen his. Uh, well, I don't yeah, watch SNL. I, so. Yeah, I thought it was really funny. Um, that's unfortunate. And Harry Styles is really young, so. Yeah. But, but uh, that dude, yeah, I guess the word is that Shia LaBeouf was his behavior on set or something um, caused Olivia Wilde to to boot him. So I'm not, yeah. I'm not sure how much of that is true. Probably some truth, probably some not truth to it. So yeah, we'll probably get back to Blade. Yeah, uh, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> Blade. The budget was 45 million, which I mean, at the time filming in 1997, I feel like that's considered a pretty decent budget. What is it now with inflation? Do you know? Oh, that's a good question. Let's oh. put it into the calculator. To the inflation cal- You said it was forty-five million. Yeah, from back so, to nineteen ninety. Nineteen ninety-seven, I guess, is when they filmed it. Okay, I mean, if I do the math in my head, it's at least something billion. <laughs> it's like eighty million. Forty-five, billion. Ninety-eight. It, it'll probably be a hundred and something. Hundred and thirty-nine. Calculator. Okay, value yeah, of nineteen ninety-eight dollars to today. Let's do yeah. forty-five. Calculate. Uh so converted amount seven hundred and eighteen. Holy shit, what? No, that's not what? right. 719 million. million. Yeah, it says, oh, wait a no second. Way. I put in an extra zero. Yeah, I'm going to say it's <laughs> oh my, I put in 450. <laughs> they gave that movie a billion dollars. <laughs> and he made a tax. What is it, the Avengers? It. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 45. They jail for tax evasion. 700 <laughs> of that was to Wesley. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> How many zeros are in forty-five million? I, what am I, what's wrong with my math? Four, it's six zeros. That's what I thought. Maybe okay. It's uh yeah. so it's worth seven hundred and uh, seventy-one million today. So oh, okay, I was, I was way off. <laughs> yeah. So almost yeah, double. Yeah, I figured. 
Yeah, almost double that. Um, so, so not not like a, a office, big budget. Yeah, but a reasonable uh, amount. Um, yeah, box office cumulative worldwide gross was 131. So, do you think that's a hit? Or looking do you think that's like, looking at today's standards, like today's view. And to, to today's RP. views, it's it's most people would be like, oh, that's a bomb. Like it's it wouldn't be considered <laughs> that's financially successful. But looking at the time, looking at the the target audience, looking at the mm -hmm. R rating, I mean, yeah. pretty and much. And it's like the first of its kind. Yeah, they made three times the the budget amount, so I I'd say that's a yeah. pretty yeah. big hit for the time. And Donatus, you might know this a little bit more than me, but would you say this is like? I don't want to say like a, a black target audience movie, but you know how there's movies like Shaft and... Uh, yeah. Um, um, with Blade, I don't know. Like, so I probably don't have the best person to talk to about that. Like, cause I'm African. So I didn't like, like yeah. it's just not even like the, um, I, I mean, I could talk about Black Panther because of its African themes, but Blade isn't really like, it doesn't resonate. So much when an yeah, person, I, I just but... I just didn't know if you would know more about like those that well, direction of, of movie than me. Like like Brandon, for yeah. example, your mom, she's she's African American and she watches all the Medea Definitely. movies. That's like her thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> so so I don't... Before those movies. Yeah, I'd, I'd call this one more superhero based. Like it was just targeting the uh, the nerd fans. I wouldn't. Say nothing it's about it screamed. Culture. Yeah, nothing about it screamed like black culture well, I, black I disagree culture. because if you think about it in 1999 um this is the the first like big budget movie that i can think of that has not only a black lead playing a superhero but also like one of the supporting act actors or i guess actress is also another black actor so that the two almost main characters of this movie are black and i i don't like, I don't well, know. I feel like that'll be enough to like attract a black audience, but I wouldn't say that when, when we talk about well, did it resonate with black audiences? Uh -huh. Well, yeah, it had black leads, which is really rare, especially for a big ish budget movie. Um, but in terms of did it like was it a black movie in that sense? Not nothing about it really screams that, you know, like it had action yeah. and fight scenes and martial arts. But it also has, it, it feels like it has kind of like a hip hop influence. Like throughout the movie, you hear these. I like, think you just hear hip hop every time you see a black person. That's an internal. <laughs> <laughs> that that must be an internal music man for you. No, like throughout <laughs> the movie, there, there are parts where it's like it plays like a, a hip hop song or like it has beats. Um, a, a good yeah. example that I can think of is when they're, you know, maybe like halfway through the movie, they're chasing the, the police officer and, um, it, the camera does this weird like it, it it's almost like a music video style like camera shakiness and fast forward like they move oh. the, the image forward or something and it plays yeah. funny like, hip-hop song in the background and it happens multiple times throughout the movie what's funny is they were playing eminem but you heard dr dre so i think we need to <laughs> address some issues here and I, right. I think too I, I think too with the hip-hop thing i think it's also just again you have two black leads um and hollywood is like oh a white boy in it we should probably put hip-hop in there to, to for marketing purposes no i'm serious like it happens all the time anytime you see yeah. like, a movie that that has black women there's like some hip-hop influence and it's yeah. not necessarily because the movie itself is trying to like um, convey that as much as it is maybe marketing, maybe some ideas from other producers and maybe Wells Sanchez was like, yeah, I want to put in some hip hop. Um, but overall, nothing about like this, the feel of the movie, the theme of the movie. I don't think anything, it grabbed anything from black culture. Um, okay. And I, I think, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's again, like I watched and I didn't feel that at all. Yeah. Um, and th there's another movie that, I watched it. I felt like it resonated a lot more in, in that sense, but I can't remember the name of it right now. But no, Blade just didn't feel that way. And maybe, like, what do you think, Brandon? Do you think there's, there was, any, was there anything in there that you're like, I just reminds me of my Medea movies, my mom used to watch? Or was it just like. Uh, no, other than, other than the actors, I didn't see anything like cultural or any like, you know, thing trying to grab at the black community. Okay. Maybe, may, I, I was thinking about a little bit more. Maybe that like a, a black targeted movie isn't 
isn't exactly what I was thinking. I think maybe it fits more into a Los Angeles vibe. How do you guys feel about that? Because the movie's set in Los Angeles and Los Angeles has, you know, a big minority population. And I think <laughs> culturally it feels like the black thing didn't work out. Well, what about Mexicans? What about no, 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 no. That's, what I'm, men- that's <laughs> not what I'm saying. I mean, there's, there's, a, black, there's a black population <laughs> in, in Los Angeles, there's white population, yeah. there's Asian population, but I feel like maybe in my view, the movie encapsulates like a Los Angeles in the Some minorities late, late 90s. Yeah, <laughs> may, maybe that's that is what it is because there's a big I, I would Asian it definitely population feels like, in the movie. Yeah, it definitely feels like 90s. I'll give you that. It feels very 90s and it feels very, um, very LA. Yeah. I mean, and they, they don't shy from like the LA scene. I mean, there's, I mean, Blade driving through the streets, it's very much looks trashy and, you know, like LA had those vibes. But I, I mean, that's, that. I'll give it that because that's, it was a product of its environment and it tried to do a good job, I think. Conveying right. So it. maybe that's what I, I saw, but I, I first like, saw it viewed it more as maybe it's like they're targeting more black culture but it's more because of the actors. los angeles <laughs> yeah i think it was definitely more because yeah it's there's a lot of asians i mean los angeles like is heavily minor that's really ironic <laughs> but there's a lot of minorities yeah. <laughs> uh but no it's it's a lot of non-whites it's not really a white city mm-hmm. where, all of california really there's not a whole lot of white people depending on where you you are so yeah it did a good job in that way i guess but i, mean, other than that, I got i got something to, to, to bring up for us to discuss so with the same lines um with mahershala ali taking over do you think that that will be more directed towards black audiences kind of like how black panther did is there a, a, the, a remake i don't know about yeah he's i think it's supposed yeah to he got kind of like 2022 or or something like that but i was really excited to hear about that there'll definitely be more like of that because that's uh, especially with hollywood they're 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 way more aware of how much money they can make from doing that Mm -hmm. and especially after after black Black panther Panther success yeah exactly yeah like the fact that black panther was successful it was kind of a travesty (laughs) but it's like that seeing that right there they're gonna push hard for that because they really they understand what, like the race relations in the 90s was not great. The race relations now isn't great, but it's way more profitable. And that's, mm-hmm. that's the difference. Like, there's a lot more money to be Which made. Which is kind of, it's messed up. Um, and it's kind of a, a win and a loss at the same time for the yeah. communities that like, they're getting more adaptions, but it's at Hollywood's profit. Exactly. Doing it. Right. But it, at the it, same it, time though, I, I can't help but feel that like, because Mahershala Ali is a really good actor. I, I haven't seen him in, in that much, maybe like, you know, two, three things. But from what I've seen, he does really well in his roles. And is it really a negative that, you know, this this great, well-respected Black actor is being put into a franchise where, like, maybe there's, there's a lot of uh, people out there, you know, from whatever ethnic background, whatever race that don't feel maybe like right now don't feel as comfortable showing that they love comic books for example like oh comic books are nerdy in my culture i get you know shunned or like looked down on because yeah, i mean it's definitely a positive still like maybe maybe him right. him actors like him or like there's another marvel movie shang chi and and um it's you know it's like a mostly asian-led marvel movie like i feel like these movies yes they bring a lot of profit to disney and to to marvel but at the same time if they can if they manage to bring like people who feel like I don't want to say oppressed, but people who feel like they can't express that they they enjoy things like comic books more out into the the open and like oh it's cool to like these comic books now it's cool to like you know characters like Blade that that and that's, to a type that's of the argument for he. Kumail Ninjiani like how he wants to. Uh, have little kids aspire to be like him and yeah you know think, bring more culture. Awesome so but um, there is still an ulterior motive it seems like from yeah. hollywood i mean of before course, we get I mean, into that we i think we should go through the plot of this movie the plot summary at least <laughs> okay. and start diving into some of the details and maybe i don't know would it be better when you edit this like have the plot in the beginning 
have the plot summary in the beginning so to look into no, the movie. no I, i've always thought that it's good to to talk about the movie as a whole first just like you know before actually getting into the details like like mm-hmm. anything around the movie like what you know first impressions like what whatever trivia information we have about it before we actually get into the nitty-gritty of the movie i think it's always fun to get some background on it you know yeah all right okay. well you want me so, to hit you with a little bit of trivia uh yeah for, first let's cover the, the the cast a little bit um actually we can skip that i go into the cast we we do it in the plot summary so yeah trivia what do you got all right well that's actually a part of my trivia <laughs> um the cast well so for did you know wesley you snipes watched... clay blade <laughs> this had actors in it <laughs> Uh, for those of you who watch Bates Motel, um, Dylan's dad is in the first uh, couple scenes of Blade. Little known actor. Um, I don't think I've seen him in like anything else, but I'm currently watching Bates Motel, so I saw him stick out. Okay. Cool. cool. I still don't know who that's. Um, <laughs> it's pretty good. Um, yeah, really, there's not much trivia other than that. <laughs> <laughs> There's one trivia about a show that you love. And it's a personal one. It's a personal one, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, Wesley Snipes wanted to actually be Black Panther. Yeah, um, I heard that. But then they approached him with this. I don't think I could see him as Black Panther. I think he's he's Blade to me. And I, it would be really hard seeing him do those more quick movements and that kind of style of a comic book. In Black Panther? Yeah. I can see. I mean, like he has the martial arts. You can see it. Yeah, he's a black dude. Like, (laughs) there's nothing about the guy that played Black Panther that was like Black Panther. Honestly, it's just yeah, he's a lot more quick and agile. And yeah, but Blade is more bulky and like stiff. Blade is pretty agile, even in this movie. Like, I saw him do some moves. I know he's doing fucking roundhouse kicks every other second and like flipping his sword and shit. Like, you make it seem like he's some brute with just like (laughs) falling on people. Like he's he's very he's very nimble. I mean, he could he put on an accent. That I mean, the thing is, can he put an accent? If he can't, then he probably shouldn't play an African guy. But can he get his lip tattooed for the role? That too. Can he (laughs) get a little? I don't know. I think for him, it's just about. Can he fight? Can he look African? Check. <laughs> See, that's Check. the thing. He can't. <laughs> he can't? He can't. <laughs> I mean, because when you have a role like Black... I never read the comics or anything, um, so I never had, like, an actor in mind before the movies came out, but, like, I don't think anyone was like, this person should play back Black... I think it was just like, okay, that person is Black... Cool. Let's see. Let's see what the movie is about, and then to watch the movie anyway. So he could have he could have easily played Black Panther, but Blade works too. Okay. Any other trivia uh, stuff? Nothing really exciting. A lot of just like small movie detail stuff. Yeah. Um. I I just have down that this was the the first live action big budget movie by Marvel Studios. Um. I think it was actually called Marvel Enterprises at the time. Someone can correct me if that's inaccurate, but um. Mm. LL Cool J in the early 90s was was interested in playing Blade. I know that. Um, oh, wow. But I think this is cool. before their actual, you know, any pre-production plans to actually put the movie together, but he was interested. Wonder how that would have turned out. Um, and then mm. besides that, yeah, I don't know, Donatus, do you have any any interesting stuff to bring? Um, Nothing really. No, no little trivia background stuff. Um, okay well outside of that then we can move into the plot so brandon why don't you take us in all right let's jump into this the movie opens with a woman giving birth but she dies in the process fast forward 30 years and that child is none other than blade played by wesley snipes blade is what is called a daywalker a half vampire half human that possesses all the strength, speed, and agility, and heightened senses of a vampire, while also being resistant to all of their weaknesses, which in this universe are sunlight, garlic, and silver. Blade interrupts a vampire nightclub while hunting down Quinn, played by Donald Logue, karate chopping, runhouse kicking, and John Wick in many vampires <laughs> at the club. 
bro. You wrote this. <laughs> Blade catches Quinn and burns him alive. Before Blade can finish killing Quinn, police arrive, causing Blade to flee the scene. Quinn's burnt body is taken to the morgue, but he survives the burning and escapes by the homicologist Karen in the process. Blade shows up at the hospital. You couldn't have put Dr. Karen. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Why don't we give her that credit? <laughs> she doesn't get it. <laughs> Uh, Blade shows up at the hospital to finish his hunt, but again, Quinn gets away. Noticing the hurt doctor, Blade swoops her up and takes her back to his secret lair, where we meet his partner, Whistler, played by Chris Christopherson. Here we learn that Blade requires a, a special blood serum injection routinely to stave off his thirst for human blood, but that over time his body is starting to reject the serum, requiring increasing doses every time. Karen agrees to help Blade and Whistler to try and develop a cure for vamp vampirism to cure herself, but also to help their fight against evil. Blade has been searching for a vampire named Deacon Frost, who is the youngest member of a secret vampire court. Frost is the black sheep of the court. As he holds parties and nightclubs like the one Blade ambushed, which risks the exposure of vampires to humans. They also do not see Frost as an equal because he is not a pure-blooded vampire, meaning he was bitten and turned and not born as a vampire. The rest of the court condemn Frost for his actions and believe that humans should be bowing down to the vampires. Secretly, Frost has been transcribing the ancient vampire Bible called the Book of Erebus and is attempting to raise the spirit of the blood god, Lamagra, to do this, he needs to sacrifice 12 pure blood vampires as well as using the blood of a daywalker. While Blade is out doing badass secret handshakes with his serum dealer, Frost and his men attack Blade and Whistler's base, kidnapping Karen and leaving Whistler a bit and beaten pulp who could turn to a vampire any time. Whistler convinces Blade to let him commit suicide to avoid becoming a vampire. Then Blade takes his syringe of, of cure that Karen made and storms Frost's penthouse where he has Karen. Blade easily dispatches most of Frost's cronies, but comes face to face with his mother, who her thought was, who he thought was dead. <laughs> you gotta spell check these, man. <laughs> Frost, <Shut up>. has, <laughs> Frost has been Blade's mother, which led to her death in childbirth. However, she came back to life as a vampire and has been with Frost ever since. Frost captures Blade and the rest of the vampire court and initiates his ritual of La Magra. All of the court members are sacrificed, and with some, some of Blade's blood, Frost absorbs the power of Lamagra and becomes the Blood God. Frost and Blade fight, but with the powers of the Blood God, Frost can fully regenerate, leaving Blade's attempts useless. In a last-ditch effort, Blade takes all of his vampire cure syringes and sticks Frost with them. Frost bubbles up and explodes, ending the reign of Lamagra. The film ends with Blade rejecting Karen's offer of the cure telling her that there is still work that needs to be done and asks her to develop a better serum for him. He then shows up in snowy Moscow, stopping a vampire attack and smiles at the camera at his credits roll. And that's Blade. All right. Beautiful. So just uh, after, after going through the plot here, um, I, guess, I guess something we should have talked about earlier is what were your guys's memories of this movie or like background of this movie mm -hmm. before you know watching it to review um so i watched it for the first time like three weeks ago dude do you remember when we watched this movie Blade? like three weeks ago and for the first time that was it yeah the first time i never watched really it then. oh no way <laughs> yeah that's why i texted you after i was like man <laughs> you should do a podcast in this movie <laughs> Cool. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. What about you, Brandon? Um, I don't remember how old I was when I first watched it. I think pretty young, um, like probably around 12 or something. But I remember not knowing that this was a part of the Marvel universe until mm -hmm. much later, like probably until we started watching um, all the Marvel movies together. Mm -hmm. And I think you informed me or I probably just learned later on. But yeah, I had no idea that it was attached so I thought it was just like a vampire hunter movie that had a lot of badass like um, martial arts in it. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely loved it when I first watched it and 
you know, I was a big fan of the whole trilogy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I don't, I, I also don't remember when I first watched it, but I do remember enjoying the movie. Um, I think I have different opinions on it now, you know, as an older person and having seen many more movies, but at the time I, I remember liking it because it was, it, it feels like a, like outside of a comic book, comic book movie it just feels like a kind of badass action film you know Mm -hmm. Um, and that is something that i after watching it a couple more times now for for reviewing it's it it almost seems like it's trying to be a more modern more intellectual arnold schwarzenegger action movie um (laughs) so I, i don't know if if you guys caught on to all the like really bad but also good at the same time one-liners that that uh oh yeah has and yeah that's where i i feel like i I don't know everything that happened behind behind the scenes but i have a feeling that wesley snipes maybe wanted to get those in as producer um i don't know how do you you guys feel about the one-liners i can't remember too many one-liners but i did remember that Blade rarely said an entire paragraph or <laughs> sentence. Like he, was, he was, yeah. most of his dialogue was like short mm-hmm. and quotable, I guess. At the same time, I don't remember them, so not that quotable. Well, but... one of my, I'll give you probably my favorite line from the whole movie is when he's, uh, I think this is after he's picked up Karen from the hospital and she's been bitten, and the cops show up and they start shooting at Blade, and he he just looks like at the camera and he goes motherfucker are you out of your mind <laughs> it's like one of my favorite i definitely wrote scenes. that as my favorite line too it's yeah. so good and the cops shoot him and of course none of the bullets hit his face they all just hit his bulletproof armor and he just stands there and <laughs> he just does that so often throughout the movie where he like almost looks directly at the camera and has this like grin on his face and and will say something and uh it's just, I love it. I <laughs> absolutely love it. Um, so, so getting through the, we'll, we'll kind of go through it here. The beginning of the movie, uh, just as it starts off, um, you know, we see the mom dying in the hospital bed. I thought it was a not really necessary part of the movie. I, I thought the mom in general was not really necessary to the story and didn't yeah. too much. Like, I feel like her being in the end of the movie was really forced in really doesn't do anything for the character it's not like he would remember her because he was a newborn so yeah and i feel the same way i thought it was a very unnecessary twist and plot point and also really nonsensical was yeah i personally like so having watched it the first time as a as an adult this movie in my opinion uh had a lot of stuff that i was just like yeah this isn't very good I kept, I kept, I kept <laughs> thinking that one Jen and I were watching it. It's like we were done. I was like, yeah, that was really bad. But, um, but the part with the mom, the reason why that was just unnecessary, especially, was because there was no reason to bring her back. I think it was yeah. supposed to be obviously a twist, and oh no, Blade's only family besides the old white dude is is like betraying a him. vampire. But it, yeah, but it didn't make any sense though because. She is loyal to the vampire race. You even said that. Yeah. But he's a literal vampire, and he's your son, so I, he should he should he should take precedence. So like, yeah. what about him? <laughs> he like so like it's like telling someone, listen, man, I I I I love you. You're my son, but you know I gotta look out for all my you know all my friends that are, I don't know, teachers or something. And like your son is a teacher. Actually, no, your son is a principal. I, he's been teaching for a while, and it's like, well what about your son discredits him from the part of people that you should take care of? So just the fact that she has zero remorse mm-hmm. for him, it was hard to believe. Right. And it adds and, nothing to the story too. It's like, yeah. I don't know if they meant for us to feel something dramatic out of it. Like, Oh my God, his mom's a vampire. And she, you know, doesn't care about him being part human. It, it really doesn't add anything like no, no yeah, I didn't really. It took the one that revealed her. I was like, "Oh, I think that's his mom." 
but that's the reaction. Like, it yeah. wasn't like, my God, Blade's life <laughs> just fell apart. Like, can you believe we invested so much time in this mother? And now she's done, done and backstabbed him. How could she, no name, care to do this? And it's just, there was, there was nothing to that. So, yeah. It, it was I wonder, if it's, and, uh, I wonder if it's part of the comics, maybe, if, if someone's more familiar with the comics, you know, let us know. Brandon, <laughs> do you know the comics? No. Nope. Um, so maybe there is something there but i mean that's not first of all i don't think that should be a reason you, yeah. you shouldn't have a bad movie plot because the comics did something like right. that because uh, i'm really gonna read your comic so next we go to the the nightclub scene which i think is one of the most badass like openings to a movie even today like the the dialogue was it's one of the most bad. memorable <laughs> memorable yeah yeah like that i thought the dialogue was really dumb really cheesy but it's so visual and like i don't know so shocking i didn't really expect the the opening couple minutes of the movie to be this guy uh, uh, you know showing up to a vampire club and then raining blood and it was just so like it like left such a good impression you know it, it if the movie yeah. continued that way you know shockingly that way for for the rest of the you know next hour and 45 minutes i'd be like fuck yes i'm in. Oh, oh, just just raining blood <laughs> like but that, that type of like I don't, it's raining blood. <laughs> 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 and I, I, you know, it's funny. So I don't mean to like take apart this movie. It's just mm-hmm. having watched it for the first time as an adult. So that beginning scene, again, just wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't a shock value because I wasn't twelve when I first saw it. So really, there wasn't anything like. No. It, so right away it was like okay. So so you, so it felt like I went to the movie with zero knowledge of what it was about. I knew it was about right. vampires. Right. So I was like, oh, he's a human that's going to be sent to a vampire then. But I didn't get the point of him. So because here's the thing. I thought maybe everyone brought a human counterpart and we're all going to feast. Right. But he was the only human in his That part vampires. didn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like, so he's there for what? And then it starts raining blood. It's like, I wrote in my notes here. It's like you go to a party and there's food everywhere. And then a literal hot dog, walking hot dog comes in. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, why do you care about that little hot dog? Like, who brought the hot dog? <laughs> there's yeah. food everywhere. There's, there's a lot of options. So there's like this blood being like run, 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 run from the sky. So why would they care about the human? Because they, they don't eat human flesh. I mean, he doesn't make any sense. I took, it, I took it kind of as like an orgy sense. Like they're all going to like share this one person. There's a I lot of people there. I brought like tent. Yeah, it's a lot of humans, people. Yeah, one is kind of like, what are you but doing? The, but... the, thing is, the thing is, if there are zombies, yeah, but they don't eat human flesh. All they care about, literally, is just the blood. So yeah. the whole purpose yeah. of him is blood. So he the, the guy being there, there makes no sense, but I, I, I think, you know, I didn't really expect going in to see that right off the bat because it sets the tone of the movie. Like, this is going to yeah. be, a, it's a pretty brutal movie. It's pretty violent. It's, it's got a decent amount of gore to it. And I like that in the first opening minutes, like this intro is just really cool. Outside of the the dude that makes no sense, seeing that's how I felt this. with um, that's how I felt with um, Children of Men in the first in its opening scene. I think it, the opening scene really grabs you. Like I've uh-huh. seen that scene so many times because of how it was made. Uh-huh. This didn't, and I watched that as an adult, and I was like, wow, holy crap, that's there's gonna be a lot of that and the movie kept with that tone for the entirety yeah. of it. it was made you uncertain watching what was going to happen yeah but blade didn't do that even so it's not even about the fact that i watched it as an adult it's just the fact that it wasn't it, it just wasn't anything like visceral about it like there's blood everywhere okay but and and i think too later on in the movie when you realize that blade just shows up to every one of these raves wh- why would they have these raves it's only it's like going to a party where you know someone's gonna show up and try to kill you. Well, no, and so that's that's like, actually that's part of the story. Is um, it's like mentioned in one throwaway line, but Blade and yeah. Whistler travel, I think, across the country from like city to city, hunting down groups of vampires. And this this is one of the reasons why that like vampire court was really you know pissed off at at uh, what's his face Frost because they know that they know of Blade. Um, yeah. I don't know how long he's been actually in Los Angeles, but they know of him. And um, the fact that Frost was doing these things is attracting attention and kind of leaving like a breadcrumb trail for Blade to find them. 
So I think that's yeah. supposed to be part of the story is like, he has no, it is part of the plot. There. Yeah, it's part of the plot. I just, I guess I don't know why he's throwing his rage in his parties. There's, there's no benefit. I mean, I guess it's like community, bring people together. Mm-hmm. But they don't well, make I, it I subtle. think one of the themes of, you know, the, one of the themes of the movie that they want to get across that I think doesn't go across quite as well as, you know, David S. Goyer wanted it to is that with this vampire court, you have all these like, you know, much older people who are living quote unquote peacefully with humans by not drawing attention to themselves and like staying private. But then you have Frost, who's the the youngest member of the board who is supposed to represent like the youth population and like trying to express things in a different way than like the older population does and wanting to be more free and like liberal with, with who they are. And I think, I, I want to think that that's a theme that Goyer was trying to, to fit into the story, but it just didn't turn out really well. Because if you think yeah. about it, uh, Frost, he, he gets like almost shunned by the rest of the court because he's young and does all these antics that doesn't fit with what they were taught and how they've survived. And Frost and his, his buddy Quinn are, you know, these two young kind of like loser, weird types that yeah so why is frost in the court why is i have no idea seriously no idea okay so you don't know either because i was was watching that and i was just like why haven't they just killed this dude there's i thought so here's what here's what i thought maybe this was a plot point that they discarded but i thought maybe one of them turned frost because they kept talking about how he was a turned vampire so i was like Mm -hmm. maybe one of them maybe they have a soft spot for him because they turned him and so it's like someone that they care for like the guy dragging or whatever his name is the, yeah. the older dude that they end up killing later i thought maybe he turned frost because and he has a soft spot and it's like a mentor mentee relationship but they never touch no, on that like no they, they never just... touch on it, it, it he, just, <laughs> he hates frost for what he does frost hates him and frost threatens him and he just he does nothing what is the, there's, no, there's nothing they're just letting this guy do whatever he, he there's nothing about this character frost the movie tells us stuff that it doesn't show us mm-hmm. it tells us that he's special tells us that he's powerful it tells us that he has um some sort of way with people and i thought maybe he has like special vampire seduction that he attracts people uh-huh. and people can't help but like him but nope they're not, they're not touching that either I think, just he just, I think he just attracts the like younger vampire like the newer vampire crowd and like hey don't you don't have to follow these older methods of living like we should be free we're more powerful than humans so let's let's act like you know we have the power and that's why he See, has people yeah following. david the screenwriters definitely didn't touch that at all then yeah. or at least not in a way that made sense because if you explain it that way if it's like okay he's a beacon of something new right like he's like a he's he's a, a revolutionary in that yeah. way okay i can see why they want to follow him right um, because he's the first maybe the first person that did that but why would the court not discard that why would they have potential coup and not even care and it's yeah. just, there's zero reason why they don't just rip his head off and say well, we should right. probably get rid of this dude that so. what might kill us and then he ends up killing him right easily too with, with zero <laughs> i know it was the easiest the, insurrection the, ever <laughs> i know there, no no one fought they're just like oh no they used force that's crazy <laughs> vampires they've been around for thousands of years the, and, I, and that's the one thing i walked away with the movie thinking how did they survive this long Mm-hmm. how did any of them survive this long because it was really easy it's easy to kill them as a vampire hunter and it's easy to kill them within the vampire race there's there's no there's it's like mm-hmm. having a government it's like walking into the capitol or the white house oh, no. and, saying, <laughs> and, say, oh, no. and saying hey i'm going to take over and they're like what and that's, <laughs> no. it. <laughs> that's it please that's don't exactly actually how they fight they don't fight went. yeah that's exactly yeah. how the fight one they don't they're like you wow i never thought you would want to take over okay <laughs> <laughs> this is surprising well, we didn't have this wanted. in our uh we didn't have this kind of threat written down in our bylaws i know we never thought someone would want to take over but there's no rules for this so i guess you win it was so, it was so i wonder if if there was you know other drafts of this script that maybe address this more or maybe david goyer just didn't think too hard about it at all but <laughs> maybe he thought that he was an airtight script he was like that, i mean that makes sense right this is where sometimes having multiple writers in a movie does 
help is you have yeah. people come in from different perspectives and say, hey, what about this? This is a plot hole. And that's one thing I wish this movie did way better. And I don't, I don't remember enough about the, the sequels to know if it addresses this more. But the rules mm. and the laws of vampirism, I feel like it, it's introduced well here, but there's not enough to, to like make it really consistent. So hopefully yeah. in the sequels, they, they, t- they touch on it more because I don't remember if they do. I, haven't, I didn't see uh, Blade 2 or 3, uh, so I don't know if they write on some of that stuff. But well, we're going to have to do the sequel. We might just have one. to keep going. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not watching more. <laughs> no. I, I, just, I mean, I'll, you can tell me if it is or isn't, but I, there's nothing about that universe that's still that interesting. But I will say, though, the um, next one is actually more highly regarded than this one, and I think part of the reason is because it's, it's directed and maybe written by Guillermo del Toro, or he was one of the Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard that. So that he did the second one. So yeah. it probably would be better unless, I, okay, unless the second one goes back, like the first five minutes is saying, oh, okay. So here's why the first movie did all this stuff. <laughs> they have, like, they have a recap, did, like a yeah, they have a recap. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then you just like retcon. And then the reason why Frost is actually, you know, you know, being followed by the people because he has this mystical. We never said in the first movie, but it's it's there. It's true. Maybe it's, it's like there. a Evil Dead Two. Maybe that's that's how Blade. That would have been great it. if Blade Two was like, <laughs> oh, okay, we have some people here that can work on this. Let's make a, a different revised version of this. Um, because overall, I mean, I I I just I got what I was going for. There's just so many parts there. I was just like, like a movie tells you something. Mm-hmm. And you and it doesn't convince you. The, all you're left the entire movie is saying, "I don't, I don't believe this." You know, right. is like I, I can't believe this. I can't believe this character. I can't believe this plot point. I can't believe this scene because there's there's been nothing. It's it's it's, it's asking for something that it hasn't earned as a right. movie. And so and it did that a lot. Yeah, it did that with Frost. Did that with Quinn. Like well, I don't know if you guys artists. have seen the um, the Underworld movies or not. Have you Have you guys mm-hmm. seen those? Brandon, I yeah, Arthur when I was a kid. But um, so that's another that's a movie series that started off pretty good, pretty decent, but then really went off the deep end in the sequels. But that movie it, it addresses you know it's all about vampires and stuff and kind of similar like there's an ancient vampire court type thing. There's like leaders and stuff. But I feel like that movie does way 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 better at establishing the rules of of vampirism and like how they've gotten along in history you know without being exposed to humans and stuff so um yeah i don't think it needs to like dive into i don't think it needs to dive into like all these rules like i don't need to hear like the history of vampires and how that i think it was just if if a movie brings up a if it brings up an idea or brings up or uh, brings up an assertion but there's nothing preceding that. That isn't, it doesn't need to be like a whole company. Like this is the history of vampires. This is how they got along. Because it talks on the fact that they work hand in hand with humans. They weren't hunted. So they felt safe in that way, which was great. I was like, okay, I believe that. And so they established that they've done a good job of surviving, but to be overthrown so easily. It's like, I don't know. I've seen that in some movies where like, I, I don't know, I've ever get seen those movies where they say something has been one way for the entire time before the movie started. Uh-huh. When the movie starts, it shows how untrue that clearly was. Like, like I don't know if you, I don't Star Wars. Know, it, it, yeah, I'm sure that's, that happened in Star Wars, but it happened recently with um, the sequel for Zombieland. It was, uh-huh. I don't know if you guys saw that, but there was a, I won't spoil too much, but there was a, a safe haven, like a safe house type thing, uh-huh. a construction that was built by a bunch of peace loving anti-gun you know survivors and so they built a community where zombies weren't infiltrating them there was walls around it was a great way that people were able to survive and they they had been there for a while so the main characters went towards that place to to as as a sanctuary and so the movie establishes that this is this has been around for a while they've survived for for a long time they have a community that have all this normal normality of what we used to have before zombies attacked uh-huh. And the five minutes after we, int- we introduce us to this new group, they do something so stupid that it attracts zombies. Mm-hmm. And and it wasn't because of the new characters bringing. Some of the new characters came and said, "Hey, I have an idea. Let's do this." Uh-huh. They could at least have done that. 
But no, these were established characters that were right. shown to have survived doing something that now attracts a zombie and almost caused their demise. It's like they forgot I their own up. rules or something. Yeah, like no, almost like they didn't oh, have wow. any rules. And so uh, the movie tells us that they survived for a long time. And I'm like, no, they didn't because they, they, they would have done this earlier. And I don't know why, how they didn't. And it's just, it made no sense. So I, I don't ruin this plot point, but it's like a movie tells you something, but it shows you so quickly how that untrue that is, but you're still supposed to believe its earlier statement. And that's what happened with this movie. It tells you that they survived a long time, that it's a good group of people. Yeah. But then it falls apart the second someone, a young uppity vampire decides to, you know, cause a coup and there's no remorse whatsoever. And there's, there's, there's no sort of, um, there's, there's no like actual issue doing that. So it's just really weird. And, yeah. and it made it really hard to just fold that. So I don't know. I feel like I, I don't want to rag in the movie. So I, I feel like I'm just, I well, I mean, that's it. what this is about. You know, we, we got to pick yeah. out the bad things, pick out the good things. Um, there I were... think it has to do with the time era that it was done in because like, it was a risk doing this movie at all. And obviously it was like the first of its kind with big box office. So they didn't want to really get too deep into it. Like they were trying to make it snappy and just make as much money as they could with the first one without getting too serious or like digging into those details. For yeah. I so mean, maybe, maybe it was having... the plan of having sequels to, to flesh those ideas more out. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. So like, let's just, Let's make our money wise. back in this first one, and then we'll we'll get into it in the Dive next into one. Into it more. But, mm-hmm. So you think they played it safe just because it's the first movie? Yeah. But even though, like, mm. why introduce these concepts if you're just gonna kind of half-ass it? Like that that part pisses me yeah, off. Yeah, like cut it out and just put more action in if that's what you're gonna do. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. fine with more action. I mean, can we talk about <laughs> Quinn for a little bit? I, Quinn's oh character. god, I hate his character so much. It's not even about the fact that I hate his character. Gotham. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Donald. <laughs> yes, such, yes, such weird reasons for love and characters, Brandon. They're from this movie that I like, or this show that I like. You shouldn't hate him. But in this movie, it's not, it's like okay. But I mean, I don't, I don't have an opinion about his character. Like he's kind of annoying, but but the reason why his character was just was more annoying is that so Blade in the the first time we see him introduced to Blade. Blade is, 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 is he saves himself this time I'm gonna try to burn you like you know he's having a hard time killing this one vampire so in my head I'm like oh this is an indestructible vampire he's he's harder to kill than anybody else he probably regenerates really fast he's he's a special vampire because why is Blade having such a hard time killing him and <laughs> and and then later in the movie Blade just cuts his head off and he's dead I know so the, the, we, spent, yeah. we spent the entire movie showing this guy surviving everything so we think that he's special, but then it's like he's actually not. He's just a vampire that Blade doesn't want to kill. Because yeah. it makes us think that Blade just didn't want to kill him. He could have just cut yeah. his head earlier. He could have stabbed him in the heart, but he just cuts his limbs off. Well, I know I know. story-wise, he's not killing Quinn. He's always hunting Quinn because he's trying to figure out where Frost is. I don't. I just don't feel like that. He's using him as bait. Yeah. But it's also that's is that really, what it is? That's a weak story point because it, I mean I don't he doesn't even end up finding Frost with the help of Quinn. Yeah. So and he never just, he's, he's not torturing him asking questions either. He just he's like I I'm gonna kill you this time. Right. right. Oh, darn, I didn't kill you this time. It's weird. I thought cutting off your pinky toe would do it, but you just, I will you say though, in the beginning when he catches Quinn, like. The opening is is my favorite part of the movie, but it has mm-hmm. some specific like shots that are I think are just so fucking golden. Like when he um, when he first introduces his boomerang knife, he uh, yeah. he he holds it, and there's like a bunch of dudes in in the circle in front of him. He brings out the boomerang knife and smiles before he throws it. Like there's so many moments in this movie where he just like I don't Wesley Snipes must have told the the camera operator like. When I do this, you pause and you hold the camera on my face because I'm going to smile or I'm going to flex or both. And he literally, yeah. it, it holds on him for like two seconds. It's like almost too long. And he smiles, throws the thing, and then it kills everyone and comes back. And then when he, when he actually catches Quinn, he shoots his like shotgun silver bullet thing and stabs him in the shoulder. Then my favorite part is he shoots him a second time in the other shoulder and when it hits his other shoulder, the camera goes back to Blade. And again, for too long, it, it freeze frames on him. And he goes, 
Like, you guys remember that? Yeah, exactly. It was like I I don't know if it's unintentionally I mean, funny or if he thinks yeah. he thinks he's just so badass. He's like, you better put the camera on me. Like I I, I don't maybe, know. Maybe he's maybe it's for the trailers. They were trying to get shots. Like cause some movies going... do shots. Yeah. <laughs> some movies do shots, I feel like because like, okay, this would be good for the trailer. Let's one for the trailer and leave in the movie. And it's good marketing. Like you can, you can see in the commercials, Blade looking cool. I don't know. I mean, he probably wanted he want he wanted the character to be bigger than life. I'm sure because that's the goal when you start a character is that it's a household name. So you want to have some sort of that quirky personality. But the problem is that he spent time with faces and you know camera shots, but not a whole lot of character development for Blade. That would have yeah. made him a lot more of a household name. So that was kind of I don't know. I mean, it was. It was really interesting because each character was just they were trying to go for something that it just f- fell flat like i think of all the characters what the movie wanted to go for versus what it actually got and it was just it, it, it did not translate well like yeah like there was that character that was trying to become a vampire that the police officer mm-hmm. who i guess was an actual police officer i think it was just it was a get up but no he's an actual cop that's risking mm-hmm. his job so he can become a vampire and then he ends up getting beat up by frost because he um didn't catch or kill blade or whoever yeah and so it's established in that scene that frost will backstab you and kill you if you fell him mm-hmm. and yet he keeps quinn around the guy that fails consistently to kill blade and who again has nothing in terms of worthiness even than any other vampire i thought yeah. he was special that's why he, he was kept him around but he was just his best friend for no reason, it wasn't established. Yeah. It, was, it was like it was. We're, we're told that they're friends, and but every scene where they interact and share a laugh, mm-hmm. the movie. I don't, I don't know if it was just me, but every one of the scenes, I was thinking, ah, this is it. He's he's gonna get he's gonna get stabbed. <laughs> like Frost is gonna beat him up. He doesn't. It was yeah. sincere, but it felt so unsincere. It felt like when a villain is about to kill one of his henchmen mm-hmm. because they did something wrong, and they play along. For a bit right and they they do something no it never happens it, he's actually sincerely smiling and laughing with like at the, the very he, end when he's like stick out your arm and he like yeah like, and, uh, and he did i'm just that. kidding <laughs> yeah i was like okay so he wouldn't do that cool and then they have this weird awkward and i wish i could just play the scenes back to you guys because there's so many awkward interactions with him and quinn where they're where i kept thinking they were gonna pull the wool under and like have them backstab and kill Quinn and he never does he's just sincerely nice to him and it made no sense and and it just it was like when he gloats well. about how badass Blade is yeah yeah like that it's like I don't understand why he's around oh you mean the, the part when he's like oh he's got his he pulls out his knife and he's like that come through <laughs> it's so funny yeah. <laughs> that would have been a good point to kill Quinn yeah yeah there's a lot of points there, but he just never does it. So I just, yeah. I didn't get why that, like they should have established that friendship better. Like, cause I, I, sh- I should have been able to believe, cause then if he does backstab him, I shouldn't have been able to predict it so easy, you know? Yeah. Cause if he did backstab him, I'd be like, oh, okay. I saw that coming. Yeah. Their so friendship like, is, is very flat. Like it's not, it's, it's paper thin. It doesn't very really paper make thin. too much sense. I think it's because of that scene uh in the part they had a party at uh, frost's place uh-huh. and quinn was bragging about knowing frost oh was like, yeah yeah, yeah. He's, my, he's my friend and my mm-hmm. all stuff and then frost ignores him so we see a very one-sided friendship where he's probably using frost or quinn um to get his whatever he needs right and quinn is just a, a fan and he's one of many fans it doesn't mean anything to him but nope he's actually a friend that he yeah. never hurt and I'm like, okay. So I think it's a good cut. It's a good idea of you know these two kind of younger, newer vampires working together to like you know do everything that the court tells them not to, but it just wasn't written good. Like it should have been yeah. written way better. Their friendship because I, I like the idea of them, but I, I really it's, don't. It's cool like to them. yeah, it's cool to have that. It just it wasn't yeah like having a best friend that you can like talk to you about real stuff is cool when you're a notorious vampire person <laughs> but they never did that and um so i just i just feel like i'm shit on this movie a lot and i i don't know like i i i, I was talking to Janet too i was like babe what do we like about the movie like there's 
Like it was a good, it wasn't a bad movie, but I was like, every time I think about parts of it, I'm like, oh, that was dumb. That was dumb. Well, um, one another- thing I really liked is I, I thought the choreography, the stunt choreography throughout the entire movie was really, really well done. Um, outside of a couple editing mishaps where the, the editor cut stuff really bad. I don't know if it's due to not having the proper coverage and footage, but I thought it looked really good when they were doing stunt based stuff. Like I, I'm assuming Wesley mm-hmm. Snipes did most of his stunts because um, I know he's like a really big martial artist and yeah. he, he, he just seems the type of like action star that would say like, no, let me do my own thing. Um, and I try to pay attention to that a lot the second time watching it, like watching the action scenes and how they, they cut the footage and trying to like see if it's actually him. I think a lot of the time it is, um, which yeah. is why it looks really good. And that's one of the reasons why I, I did add like, you know, I said he was John wicking people in, in the summary is I, I got a lot of similarities to John wick in this movie. I mean, you don't know too much about blades character. You don't know too much about John wick. You just know that, um, he's kind of like this boogeyman type of character that, yeah. that the vampires are like, yeah. watch out for him. He, when he shows up, shit goes south. And yeah. I love his, his introduction in, in the beginning in that, that nightclub is like when he first shows up at that party, the camera starts like at his feet and then slowly pans up yeah. and then you get the reveal of Blade. And that's just him being introduced that way and him kicking ass in that nightclub. It just like, it, it felt like John Wick. It felt like he's this yeah. universe's boogeyman. And I really liked that. I thought that was... Yeah, that was, re- that was really, really well good. done. Yeah, I agree. That was really good. I think they did a good job of making him that character that... Was, I mean, obviously, after that scene, we follow him. Right. But even then, the show, the show scenes where he randomly shows up, like, and he's kind of like... Uh, he, he's like when in the apartment with the lady where the, the cop guy shows up mm-hmm. and is about to kill her. Mm-hmm. And he just shows up there. I was like, okay, that's really cool. Like he's he's always there and he's always watching in that yeah. way. Like you you have that feeling like whatever's going down, he's gonna be there. Like even if it's in Moscow, he's gonna be there. Yeah. Um. So they did a good job with that. I wish they leaned in on on that more. Like because we know that he's like the boogeyman. We know like he's the person that you hear his name and you 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 know it doesn't matter if you're a vampire that's been around for five thousand years. Right. You, you you need to run. You need to get out of there. Uh. Because he'll kill you. And um, but then it felt like it, it didn't keep that as the movie went along. So like mm-hmm. they devalued that image. I don't know. It just it felt like it was established really early on. But then well, I think that's that's a hard part about these types of movies. And like even in John Wick, you know, John Wick has two yeah. sequels. They're making a third, and the the first one. I don't. I personally don't think the first one's the best one. I really like John Wick two. I think that's the best one out of the three so far. Um, yeah. But in the first one if you look at it as like a standalone film, you really don't know much about his character, except that, you know, this is his basic simple motivation. His yeah. wife died, left him a dog, dog gets killed, he kills everyone. That's, that's his motivation. And throughout the movie, from, from the, you know, antagonist viewpoint, like you get little glimpses of like, this is why we're scared of this motherfucker. And yeah. this is why he's so, you know, he's so powerful and he's so good at what he does. But they don't tell you enough to like make it a story about John Wick as a character. And that's why that movie is so damn good. And I think they could have stuck that route with this movie and just like, you know, little small glimpses of like, this is why he's doing what he does. Um, And there's, there's things like, uh, like we see Blade shrine, which I don't understand at all. So I don't, I don't know if that's something that's explored further in the movie, but I feel like that's what David S. Goyer was trying to do is like, hey, we're, we're going to attempt to keep him as this mythical like boogeyman figure and then give you little little hints at like his motivations and what he's about and tr- introduce him as like a person, not just this badass character. And I think that's what the shrine and the whole mother connection was trying to do. But I almost yeah. wish they just left that out. And especially in this first movie, just leave him the boogeyman, like have him like a daredevil Batman type character where he shows up, you know, and then causes mayhem. And then that's all we get from him. Like, we just want to see more. And I I don't know if they just try too much to like characterize him in this first movie. Um, But what what did you guys... I thought that was the 
probably the only only thing in the movie that the promise didn't deliver on our prom like the, the, so the the premise and the and the assertion is that blade is like a, a person that you should fear he's a badass he's he gets stuff done and they actually followed through with that that i i really like that i feel like i didn't feel like blade didn't deserve that title i could be i don't know if you agree with that brand if you feel like blade was shown as the like the, the mythical yeah, the boogeyman that he was conveyed as, because same thing with John Wick, like, they, it was a little ham-fisted in John Wick, where the, the guy was given a little monologue as John is beating the floorboard or the concrete floor, saying, like, he's the boogeyman, or he's the person you get to kill the boogeyman, and it's like, okay, uh -huh. yeah, he's badass, but then the show, the proof, like, the proof yeah. that they, they follow through, and it show him actually, like, being a, a badass, um, so, like, okay, that's good, they, they really delivered on that sense, same thing with Blade. So I felt like they did a good job with saying this is the concept of him and then this is why he has that title that he has as opposed to like Frost and Quinn and everyone else that didn't earn or deserve any of those titles but what do you think about that Brian? No yeah I, I agree I think that they they completely delivered on his role in the movie and him you know being that scary character who the the vampires fear but then, do um, they? Do yeah, you guys they, think that they take away from that a little too much by by giving us this backstory of his mother and and like introducing this shrine that he worships for whatever reason, and he has like the ID of of his his mom. Like, I don't. Do you feel like some I mean, of that just gets wiped off because of that? Well, I think it's to show that he's still got a human side to him. Yeah. You no, know, same thing. Same thing with John Wick's character having a. A, a, a wife that dies and a dog that he cares about mm -hmm. you know it, it's a show that like and i feel like maybe that's what makes them more badass is that it's easy to have a character with no emotion no feelings that just kills people yeah and like has no death to him but to have a character that has emotions and can feel hurt emotionally um and has had loss in his life but mm -hmm. still power through and be that destruction that boogeyman that's cooler in my opinion it's more it's more of a wow that's that's really interesting because that's harder you know it's harder to have those those human that human side to you right and still be that uh, to be the character that every other character that isn't human fears is way more badass um so i think that's what john Wick did right is that they gave him that sentimental side and they right. put him against a bunch of thugs that to our audience uh, perceptions have no backstory have no love have no emotions and he still beats them up so he has all the reasons to hold back because he's, he's got a human side they uh -huh. don't and he still wins so i guess that makes it more of a oh wow that's really cool but i mean that's that's why i think they would show that i just feel like it could have been done i don't know if just done better maybe yeah I, I like if they're going to show him worshiping this flower thing like expand upon it a little bit more like why just yeah, show they, it and then not tell us anything about it yeah they could have definitely talked more about that um but i mean i don't know and also why does I, he save it's never explained why he actually saves karen like is it because for i thought it's because he reminded i thought it's because he it reminded her him of his his mom that's what that's i thought, thought too yeah like I, he I never met karen. his mom he never saw her i know that's what was weird about it because he's a baby so he doesn't know i think it's because Maybe Blade just has a soft spot for black women because his mom was a black woman. Maybe. I mean, that's basically what they're saying when they show us him saving a person that resembles a character he's never met. That's that's what it's, I it, thought. But yeah. it just... Why not... Maybe the, maybe the movie forgot. Expand on it. That he <laughs> probably forgot that he never saw his mom. I was like, oh, yeah, so he sees Karen because he reminds me of his mom who so spent years and years... <laughs> but and then he, by that time, they're already <laughs> shooting. He's like, oh, shit. <laughs> Yeah, and he, and they're like, wait a minute, years and years with his mom. That's not right. <laughs> and then they're like half right. production. But I mean, that's 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 why. That's the only reason why they. I think I, that I would be a good something motivation I about. if it's like if he, you know, he has this idea of his mom, and if if they introduced more of like, you know, I'm going to specifically like help protect maybe like younger vulnerable black women or something who are being attacked like this is one of my motivations because of my history because of my mom dying or whatever yeah that could have been good does he, does he have his mom's id does he have like a picture of her yes but i don't know how he had it 
Yeah, I don't know either, but I mean that's probably why. Maybe he knows what that picture looks like, and and maybe the fact too that that girl got bit in a hospital, and his mom mm. went to a hospital and died. <laughs> maybe like, <laughs> maybe maybe that connection, like the hospital, the bite, the black woman. He's like, oh, there's so much here. I, I gotta save so her. So many small similarities. So many small similarities. <laughs> like, this is basically my mom. <laughs> who yeah. is also the love I just can't pass on this yeah um, I don't know like the, yeah there wasn't I thought that too for a bit I was like there's no reason why he, there's, no, there's no connection that he has with his mom that way that he would yeah. save a random black girl but the movie needed a girl love interest yeah um I don't know. what, what do you guys think do? of her character by the way yeah I was gonna actually ask that I don't know like <laughs> she she was good I don't remember a whole lot about her. Yeah, she didn't do a whole lot. Yeah. But neither did she like a lot blood. of characters. Yeah, she provided blood. But it was, he was, she was a lot very of, convenient characters. character because she she happened to be a hematologist that helps Blade develop a cure really quickly, by the way. Yeah, by the way, yeah. Really, really smart. quickly. <laughs> she was like, let me a cure? That's all oh, you want. I've wanted. never seen this before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> vampires. And then she's all about vampires. Like she goes yeah. from like never knowing about this world and how it works to like yeah I I, I just you know blah 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 put some beakers in a in a, in a thing and cause I think this is it yeah and so drink this and 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 it's like and it works it doesn't instantly blow up blades like it doesn't like give him a heart attack it's like yeah yeah that's that's good and it's also what's weird too is that blade like injects himself with blood right to curb See, his, that's what I don't it looks like blood. I feel like they should have differentiated yeah. it because I, I don't think it's blood if his whole thing is, oh, I'm not going to no, exactly. in the That's vampire what side. Me. So, yeah, it's like if it's blood, then he's might as well just drink it. Yeah, right. Because his magical serum up blood making it better. should have been expired. I feel like it was kind of the MacGuffin of the movie. Like, we have to establish it whatever it's we there, want. but we're not yeah. going to delve into it further. Please don't ask questions about it. Yeah, because it could be something else later on that we need it to be. Right. So, and again, probably yeah. gets touched on in the sequels. I don't know if you remember, Brandon, but is that something that comes up? Uh, I have no idea. Um, but it's definitely something that we could have addressed in the sequels more and held off on doing that. Like having her figure out those things in the second movie going forward. Yeah. And I also think it would have been cooler if we had a couple like trial and error scenes, like where she she injects him and he does have a heart attack and he like barely survives or something. Yeah, or that would have shown like, you know, the actual like course of science. It's not just like right. I yeah. made this in. Yeah. And, but this is a two-hour movie. Oh, figured it out. So. Yeah, I guess. They could have had her in the background working on that instead of like a, yeah, like a montage work. or something, you know. Yeah, but. like so she didn't need to be there just to get potentially killed. It, just the fact that he was so quick to give her a gun and say, all right, you're my partner now. You know, he yeah. did it so long without her. And so the fact that she was, like, she could have easily been relegated to scientists that find the cure in the background yeah. while he's doing all, all the stuff he's always done. But they brought her into the mm -hmm. forefront so that she could be in danger. That was really it. And so you can ask someone to save. Constantly. But I, I did really like, though, um, after, you know, after they, like, patch her up and send her back on her way and Blade tells her, like, you know, they're, they're out there watching you now that they have your scent or whatever, but he's actually using her as bait. I really love yeah. that that scene when she like she goes to her apartment building and then now she's like really suspicious of everyone and she notices yeah. the, the tattoo mark on the two people's neck and movies gonna stop like, doing that man movies gonna stop giving like I know people tattoos or the thing like <laughs> what who's that for other people like <laughs> yeah it's bro it was a silly concept that I yeah. like the idea of it but um. Yeah, I, I think it get a, get a name tag then. Like like you know, right. like imagine <laughs> yeah. if you imagine if you went to a school that they tattooed you and branded you, so you got to walk around with Oregon State in the back end. Yeah. And it's like it's it just doesn't seem like a thing that would be useful aside right. from plot device. But but uh, I really love though when when she's in the elevator and she you know she's like suspicious of those people, and then she like it's like a close up shot of her with the people in the background and she like turns around and looks at the guy and the guy straight up looks like marlon waynes jr he, like, oh i think I it was him i remember that <laughs> but he legit looked like him and he just goes how you doing and then she turns back <laughs> around. i just i lost it it was so funny and out of place it's so ridiculous well, what's weird is that they didn't end up 
I mean, they had the, you know, the tattoos, but but they didn't, they didn't do anything. Actually, yeah, they didn't do anything. So yeah. it, it was it was it was a throw. It was I don't know. I think it was a, a great way to like establish fear. Mm-hmm. But then the fact that the human guy, the the cop, is the one that actually was a threat to her. Yeah. I don't know. It was it was interesting, but again, I, I also, tie it back to to John Wick because um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if you guys remember, but the end of John Wick two, where you know John Wick he's excommunicado and he he's on the run, and then everyone, all the assassins in the world get like the notification, like there's a bounty on his head, and he's running, and everyone's checking his phone, and it's like this idea of like paranoia. Oh, everyone's yeah. like, out to get you. That nobody's on. No, your side. no it was good. I, I like that. I like that connection there. I just want to clear up to be sure. Have you seen the third one? Because you mentioned that the third one's not out yet, but it is. No, he said the third sequel. So he said there's two sequels, yeah. which means there's three Wait, movies. Third and what? the third sequel, John Wick. Third John Wick. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. I have it. No, I'm saying three the, out. the fourth one. Yeah, no, okay. The fourth one's in production. Fourth one. Yeah. yeah, he said he said said there's three sequels. <clears throat> So the first movie, three sequels, yeah. four movies. Just the way okay. he said that made it seem like those three movies uh, that hadn't come out. Yet. Another another scene I really liked is, uh, and this is another line of comedy gold, is when they find that Blade um, captures that police officer and they like go down to his car. They pop open the squad car trunk and then find the the bags of blood or whatever, and. Blade's like interrogating him, asking him, you know, where's the, I think he asked him like, where's the blood bank or something or where's Frost? And the cop goes, he's like, uh, go fuck yourself. And Blade's response is, fuck me? No, you fuck this. And he whips his gun out. <laughs> that was so funny. It's so stupid. But... It's having a good reaction to It, that it makes no go, sense. Go fuck yourself. Fuck me? Fuck this. No, I didn't say that. I, did, I said go fuck yourself. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> what? there's just so many of these moments which i don't know for me make the movie so much better like they make no sense but it just it's reminiscent yeah. of an action movie from the 80s and i love it it's funny so <laughs> i, I want to bring up with the with magra uh whole plot point with la migra whatever the, the blood <laughs> god so that's I, that's like another established uh character well a character that was trying to be established that also dropped the ball like i thought it was going to be an actual character yeah you know? the way they were talking be, about made it seem yeah, like the, these, yeah, a thing a spirit or whatever a separate entity yeah there was like a, it was going to be an abomination type deal with a certain amount of powers that would like cause complete chaos but it's and not it at frost. all it was frost that injected skeletons i just it, the whole thing was really anticlimactic bro like i was yeah, at least was. i was I, I told myself i was like okay at least it's gonna be a cool abomination type thing that he's gonna have to fight but it was just right. frost and then frost is a little stronger and can regenerate a little faster but that was it, <laughs> like, it, was it. Not, like, he gets cool... killed within like 10 minutes yeah this ultimate also why was no other vampire in the council taking that shit seriously like they, they know about it they, they they have this new dude that's like yeah let's go get this blood god back and they're like well, no so the problem no. is they they again it's kind of like a throwaway line but um when dragonetti he goes down and like finds he he like questions frost when he's in his little computer lab or whatever he the, the thing is that they haven't ever been able to transcribe the text to like perform the ritual or something so he he told he tells him he's like wasting his time because it's never been transcribed before but i guess with new computer technology um frost was able to transcribe it so pretty easily too like he just sat around and and did all the work right he didn't do anything after years and thousands of years trying to transcribe it they couldn't just wait until technology it was yeah it was it was it was a a character that was supposed to be an abomination type deal but and nothing. and it was yeah it was just nothing so and it was supposed to be a character too that like they could turn people into vampires easy and also let's say that did happen let's say that you have this character that's created blood god he's all powerful can turn everyone into a vampire what's the end goal the end i know how, the would they, vampire, how would they survive yeah i just, he was eat? saying that and i was like what is the end goal here is that every one of the vampires except for like some people well I think the end goal was to be more like Blade because he said that he wanted to walk around in the daylight. And so maybe that also 
means that he wants to not have to drink blood anymore. But then they don't still establish the... that. They don't tell us that. And Blade still needs they, blood. It was quick. Yeah. Yeah, but Blade quick. still he... Blade still needs blood. He's he's always shooting up, so he doesn't go and like Blade isn't like immune to not eating blood or drinking blood. He still has to do yeah. that. Yeah, so, I, I guess it was just from, step one. Yeah, I mean, if they can create it, okay. So if that's step one of many steps, where they create vampires that can walk in the sun, not need blood, can eat regular food, that reminds me of a species of people that we know very well, humans. Their goal is to just create more humans. For the yeah, it's like <laughs> wanting to go for the cure. It's a really roundabout way of saying, well, let's. I love being a vampire. It's cool, but I hate that I can't go out in the sun. I hate that I have to drink blood. So let's just get rid of that. All you have is a human that can live long and I guess have strength, but if everybody has the same strength, it's just no different than well, our normal human so strength. So a couple things I think here is there's another movie, which I don't know you guys have seen, um, called Daybreakers, which... I was going to reference that because it sounds it, like that might be where it is. Yeah, it, it tackles this concept really, really well. I actually really like that movie. Um, but in, in that movie, pretty much humans are the minority because vampires have taken over and they use humans as blood bags. So they just like... I don't, I don't remember if they produce humans, like mass produce humans, or they just use the remaining humans and like consistently just like take their blood to survive. And that's what I think maybe should have been pushed more with this idea of the blood God, which didn't get touched on. Um, mm -mm. But also, I don't know if you guys remember, but there's a scene where Frost is literally out in the daylight holding that yeah, child of, and like uh, threatening but he put sunblock on yeah, his skin some, yeah so why not what's the, what's the problem Just i know wear sunblock. i know i know i was like there's, no there's actual there's actual humans that can't walk out in the sun without sunblock either <laughs> right you, you don't see <laughs> them like going around killing like it just once they established that which they shouldn't have shown, shown that scene it completely uh -huh. undermines <laughs> so much of what blade's powers is like yeah. All Blade is, is, and for all we know, here's the thing, because we know that melanin is more susceptible, like lack of melanin is more susceptible to sunburn and skin cancer. Mm -hmm. So you have more melanin, you have more protection against the sun. Mm -hmm. Wesley Snaps is dark. He's a dark dude. He could just be a black <laughs> vampire. That might be it. Like, it sounds silly. <laughs> That's the key. That might just be the fact that he's black and he has a lot of <laughs> natural sun protection. Because Maybe he's if, not actually a daywalker. He's he has he probably no isn't a daywalker. <laughs> because if you think about it, you know, like it sounds silly, but if you think about it, that might be what his power is: is being black. Because they had they show Frost out in the daylight with sunscreen or sunblock, so now he can walk in the day. He's not now a daybreaker or a daywalker or whatever. He's just a vampire with a lot of sunscreen on. Blade is is a dude with natural sunscreen. Yeah. That's the yeah. power is that he's black. So he's not probably a daywalker. He's probably just a normal vampire. And, and so the whole movie falls apart where you show a vampire with sunscreen on. It makes you realize that, oh, their skin works just like our skin. Sunscreen yeah. can protect against the sun and probably dark skin can protect against the sun too. Yeah. Or in that case, one just wear a big coat. Well, one just wear a big coat with a hoodie and a face mask and walk around and do that. Why? Like I just did so much that that scene opened up by showing him walking around with. They the, really shouldn't have on. included that. That was really dumb. No. So, I mean, that's really uh, all the stuff that I, all the gripe I guess that I have about the movie. There's just yeah. a lot of plots and ideas that were thought up and. Put what about in. um like. As far as effects go, what do you guys think about CGI, the the makeup, prosthetics? Oof. You want to get into this old CGI? It wasn't <laughs> bad for its time. Yeah, um, that's what I was, I was thinking. Is especially 1997, with the budget. 98. I, I was yeah. impressed. Some yeah. of it does look really, really shitty. It, don't get yeah. me wrong. But it didn't have a huge budget either. Yeah. I mean, Ma Matrix came out the year after, and it had a bigger budget. Mm -hmm. And Matrix had a better, better CGI. I, honestly, Matrix was... It, some parts of it felt like because even though it came first some parts of it felt like it was had like matrix uh sort of vibe to it yeah so matrix that's, was a, that's exactly was, was what i thought better. the opening yeah. scenes like just opening with the nightclub i i had a huge matrix vibe it like put me yeah. in that time period you know but matrix was shot better and it definitely yeah. did better with with uh the budget so Blade looked a lot cheaper, and, and it was a little bit more cheap, but it wasn't bad, though, for 1998 with the budget that it had. Mm -hmm. um, I actually think that 
as far as like the prosthetics and makeup go, I thought that looked really good. When it came to the CGI, it you know it's less passable. But um, when they were like like at the very start, when you see uh, Quinn's character in the hospital after he's been burned, I thought that looked really good. He looked terrifying, and it's because yeah. it wasn't CGI; it was all makeup. And like I thought, yeah. stuff like that was impressive. When um, some of the vampires, when they got injected with the cure, how they would balloon up. That ballooning looked really good because, again, it was prosthetic. But then when they exploded and it became CGI, that looked a little different. And mm -hmm. so there are definitely things throughout that looked really good. But I actually, I just tried yeah. watching um, The Phantom Menace the other day because I was like, oh, I haven't seen this in years and years and years. And looking back, I, you know, maybe it's not as bad as I remember it. And seeing the CGI from The Phantom Menace, I was like, damn. CGI was a hell of a lot different back then. It is, yeah. Like it, it looks pretty damn bad now. Like seeing Jar Jar Binks like walking around and stuff. But yeah. at the same time, at at the time, this is groundbreaking technology. Like this is stuff yeah. that had never been seen before. So different time periods. It's like you have to respect the technology. And honestly, it's mostly how it plays into practical effects. The reason yeah. why some movies hold up more is because of how the CGI complements practical effects, not so much takes over or or is used instead of. And <coughs> that's that's why the Fire Man's probably looks so bad because it was so much CGI. Mm -hmm. Um and they discarded any and all practical effects. And that's probably why Matrix looked a lot better too. There was a lot more practical effects in it. Yeah. Um for scenes. And Blade didn't look that bad either. So when you have a small budget to work with, it, you can do a lot more. Like you look at District Nine; they almost look better. And it, yeah, exactly. Because it, just, less it, of it holds up. Reliance on CGI. Exactly. I mean, Forrest Gump came out in '94, right? Uh -huh. And it, it holds up a lot in its CGI, and it had a lot of CGI. Mm -hmm. It had a lot of effects in it, and it holds up really, really well. Um, and that was five years before Matrix and and. Uh, and, and Blade. So it all just depends on, again, how the director works into the movie. Yeah. And it, it wasn't used to enhance much as well as for play. So, but overall it was good. And yeah. it didn't look ugly. Yeah. So. What about you, Brandon? O overall, what do you think of the effects work? Yeah, I, I agree with some of those points. Um, like, I, I wish they would have just tried less and keep to what they were doing good at. So, like, the makeup when Quinn was a zombie or burnt or whatever he was, that was really good. Yeah. Um, but I wish that they would have tried less. So like keep to what they were good at with when he kills the vampires, they turn into dust. And then even when they balloon up, like you said, um, but if they would have cut out, like when that one guy gets burnt by the sun and the, and the CGI was just it was so insane. Bad. Like yeah. they could have just kind of shown less of him maybe go from like behind and then when the sun affects him, he just turns into that dust. Yeah. And then, and the sun... go ahead. yeah, well, and then with like, um, when he starts using those injections again, like they could balloon up, but then just turn into dust. Like they don't need to make it so crazy. They could have just pulled back a little and, you know, done a little bit better. Not it was extravagant. At. Yeah. Yeah. And I was going to say, if the sun can do that to Dragonetti, then sunscreen isn't doing anything. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> simple layer of S SPF 15 is enough. Yeah. To... And it's, it's like, if the sun did that to us, we, no, it doesn't matter what sunscreen you have on. You're, you're getting, you're at least saying ow a lot. Yeah. At least. So. <laughs> Well, no, it's weird yeah. as he wore the sunscreen, but then he still had to put on the bike helmet. <laughs> the motorcycle helmet. And then helmet. two scenes later... He doesn't need yeah, the motorcycle he, helmet. he's out with blades. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That's <laughs> that's just the, the thing. It's like this movie is... It's not consistent with the rules. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. if you're going to introduce yeah. these these rules of what it is to be a vampire, you have to stick with it. And yeah. it doesn't do that very well. Um, All right, so overall... Um, what are the opinions and impressions you guys have? So yeah, so we'll we'll go one by one. Uh, Brandon, why don't why don't you go ahead, just wrapping up your thoughts on the movie as a whole, and then uh, giving us your score. Ooh. Um, yeah, I guess overall impression. Uh, I still loved it. Um, I think trying to to differentiate like my opinion of it 
in today's era versus like my opinion of it if I saw it back then it did really great um yeah there was some like rule breaking and plot holes there but like just overall it was a great film it was really action-packed and you know like you said it was it was really reminiscent of like that era movie um so I, I guess just overall like when the era that it came out in the movie like that it did i i gave it an 8.5 nice so what were your if you had like a favorite part or a favorite scene favorite aspect of the movie and then least favorite what would you say so a couple of my favorite aspects was his his armor um i thought it was really good for its time um and his like his overall look was just really cool mm. um I loved all the fight scenes and uh, a lot of like the the better done effects, like when uh, we see Zombie Curtis down in the like the pit. Uh-huh. I thought that was really cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I thought it was pretty funny yeah. when they introduced. Which the, did you guys the notice? Vampire. Why did he have an an accent when he was a zombie? In the beginning, he doesn't have an accent, and then at the very yeah. end, he has an accent. It was so weird. <laughs> Maybe he wanted to try something out. Yeah, I guess you're a vampire in life. I, Right. Yeah, I think the actor was probably like, yeah, let's, uh, I'm going to try an accent with this one, you guys. And the whole crew forgot what he sounded like before. They're like, sure. Did you have an accent before? He's like, He's like, yeah. I'm a thespian, guys. I, I act on Broadway. I do accents. I went to Juilliard. I am going to flex this scene. <laughs> Never even seen him before after that movie, so I'm sure it worked out. But um, the only thing I didn't like was that they, they got into too many things at once, and I thought they could have done a lot more with surprising us with things mm. like if they yeah. cut out his his mom at the beginning and we didn't really know what blade was then we could have been more shocked when he was able to go into the sunlight and do all these things it would have been a lot better build up yeah kind of went in reverse okay yeah all right donatus i agree um let's see, overall really like thoughts favorite yeah scene so or overall aspects. Overall, I wrote not a good movie. <laughs> uh, seems seems shoddily, <laughs> seems shoddily made and lackluster in every aspect it was going for. The action, the premise, the acting, the pacing it was underwhelming, and it left m- much to be desired. Jeez, it sounds worse when you read out loud what you write. But um, I did appreciate the costume and I did appreciate the makeup. I did think they did a good job with that. So it was nice that they cared in that way, but. I definitely think there should have been, I don't know about oversight in the script because I don't think, you never know what makes the script good. It's, oh, it could be the script writer, it could have been too much oversight. It could have been a lot of, I don't know, input from the producer, maybe Wesley Snaps messed it up. You never know. So it's not like one person is to blame for it, but I do think there was so much there that could have been fleshed out, not as fleshed out, that could have been a, a premise that they would have gone with more. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't say I, I don't know I think I enjoyed it but it's one of the movies where I watched it and I was like yeah not really I want to watch it again like I got it the first time I guess um and overall I'll, I'll give it I was struggling between like a three or a four out of ten jeez and, and it's not I, and it's not because I, wow. I don't hate the movie I don't hate the movie I just like movies I, I like entertaining movies like the movies that I like that are just entertaining I was like mm-hmm. that was entertaining to watch like Fury Road, like Mad Max Fury Road was just entertaining. Evil Dead 2 was entertaining. I was like, okay, I like that. I appreciate it. This wasn't that entertaining. I think it's because it's uh, like those movies that those two I just listed didn't bring bring up so much premise that is that, that it wasn't meant to like establish in a believable way. And it didn't have assertions that it didn't previously um, like establish in a way that I could I could believe. So with this one. It was just trying to do a lot, and then it didn't want to, but then it didn't go back and fix anything. Yeah. So, so that that that's overall. But I did like the the uh, makeup, and I thought Wesley Snipes was Wesley Snipes. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like he's, he's cool see, it's cool it's cool to see him on on camera, but he, it was not a good role. <laughs> like he did he just tried harder. He just tried way harder. So that's my impression on that. So what what's the overall score then? Okay. Was a, you land I'll on? give it a four. Four, four out of ten. Yeah, four out of ten. 
Um, so I'm, I'm definitely more along the lines of Brandon. I really, really liked this movie. And I, I think for me, it's because I grew up watching Arnie movies. Those were my childhood. I watched almost every single movie that Arnold Schwarzenegger did and Jackie Chan movies. And just this kind of like slapsticky, cheesy, poorly written action films that center around the star and like watching the star do their thing. And this movie just was so reminiscent of that. But also for me, it felt like it did something new. It was like, I'd compare it to Arnie's um, Total Recall. It wasn't, it was similar to the rest of his, his action movies, but it was, it was different in that like it, it tackled a whole new genre and like a whole new method of like going about what he's doing while still keeping the heart of what his movies were. Like you still get the one-liners, you get these cool action set pieces. And I think that's what Blade really excels at is, I don't, and I don't know if it's just the culmination of what the movie is, or if it's mostly Wesley Snipes in the role, but I feel like he just does that. The, he, he's that action star and it works so well. Like his, his one-liners, yeah, they're corny as shit. They're really out of place. But that's what, I don't know if they're trying to imitate those, those same action movies because yeah. it, it just fits the theme. And um, alongside the, the really good makeup and prosthetic work, um, the violence, the, I, I like how, how visceral and how gory this movie was. I didn't really expect it. Um, it was definitely a pleasant surprise. And yeah, I don't know if it's just because I'm partial to those types of movies, but this movie just did it really, it, it did it for me. I, I liked watching all of the choreography. I thought that was really well done. Um, I feel like it was a serious movie, but didn't take itself serious. Um, and I'd say the weak points for me are the length. I feel like this should be an hour and a half movie. It should not be two hours. If they trimmed out a lot of stuff, half an hour of stuff, and maybe left out the, the plot point with the mom or somehow did it better. And then I think they could do with cutting out Quinn as a whole. I feel like that would trim down the movie a bit too. He just, yeah. because they didn't, you know, David Esquire didn't enhance that friendship connection between him and Frost. It just doesn't really add anything. Um, so they could cut that out. And then if they, if he had honed in on the ideas of being a vampire more, maybe made the story smaller, like maybe the, the Lamagra stuff, save that for the second movie. Instead on this one, just focus on that vampire court. Focus on yeah. them and then Frost being the, the black sheep. That, that's enough story as is. Um, I think that would make it a really good movie. And yeah. um, so because that I give the movie, I think I, I gave it at eight originally, but I'd probably say stick with Brandon eight and a half. I just, I had a really good time. And if this was yeah. half an hour shorter, I would watch this movie all the time, but it's not, it's two hours yeah. It's a lot of time. There's a lot of fluff in the movie. There's a lot of goofs. There's a lot of things that are inconsistent, which makes it so, you know, I'd, I'd watch it. Anytime it comes on TV, I'll watch it, but I'm not going to, you know, go out of my way to watch it. But as far as Marvel movies go, as far as comic book movies go, I'd put this in almost top tier. Like, I, I think it's, it's fun. It's energetic. Wesley Snipes is awesome in it. I don't, have any impressions about him as a person but in this role i think he does really well and i'm excited to see yeah. what uh mahershala ali does with it too so yeah I'm, I'm definitely interested to see what the the remake sequel type thing with ali is yeah because like. I, I do i do like th that actor mahershala is that how you say his name i, I think that's um, how you say it <laughs> yeah i do like i do like the actor i thought he was really good um in some movies that i've seen with him and he does he has a really good range really yeah. good range you can play a lot of good characters so i'm but, interested in seeing that um but yeah so but, when when that does come out eventually we'll all all three of us will go to theaters and see it and then we'll do we'll do a review of it yeah hopefully it comes hopefully theaters are open by the time that comes out but um yeah that's my impressions on it but we're right. good talking to you guys about it yeah um usually at the end here i don't know how much time you got to notice but me and brandon kind of talk about some future events and like 
current media, anything going on in the world? Um, well, I should have been gone like thirty minutes ago, so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna dip oh, out now actually because yeah. we gotta eat. But <laughs> all right, um, well, then, feature events. Kenny, will this keep going with uh you? And yeah, me? I made I made yeah. him host. So, oh, okay, cool. All right. Well, thanks for having well, me on here. Thanks you for guys. joining yeah. us, Tenatus. We appreciate it. It's always a pleasure, no and uh, yeah, maybe if we do the sequels, we can convince you to to hop in with us too. Because <laughs> I'm I'm pretty sure the second one gets better. From what I remember, it is better. So I'm sure. Like, I I don't doubt <laughs> it, but definitely not gonna watch it. <laughs> we'll, it's, it's we'll, pick another, be... we'll pick another black film. Yeah, you can sure do that. <laughs> no, Los find Angeles. Me, find me. <laughs> Find me an, a, a really good, scary African film, and then we can talk about that. That'll be good. Oh, there's, like a, there's, a, there's a thousand, like, Nollywood movies that come out every week, so you can... Is that what it's called? Nollywood? Big. Yeah, it's Nollywood. Really? It's the third oh, no. highest <laughs> film industry. It is, it's Hollywood first, then Bollywood Hollywood. second, and then Nollywood is the third one. Because hey, what about movies. Chollywood, the Chinese Hollywood? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't uh, make a lot of movies. I think it's about how much movies you're producing and the amount of money you're making. Yeah. And Nigerians make a lot of movies. So That's so strange. I um, never would have known. Yeah. All right, you guys. Talk to you later. All Thanks right. for having me. Yeah. Right. Bye. See you next Peace. time. All right. So now that it's just you and me, let's, uh, yeah, we can talk about some future events. Anything. Do some shit do. talking. <laughs> oh. Wait, he might still be on. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know that as of this past Friday, so today Sunday, yeah. So this past Friday in Chicago, where I'm at, they uh, they announced that restaurants and bars can open back up to 25% capacity, and then like entertainment venues and stuff could open. So we can go to like museums, uh, movie theaters are allowed to be open at a certain capacity, which I am. I mean, with everything going on. Some people may think is wrong, but I miss going to movie theaters. Like that's, that was my yeah. life. That's where I spent most of my money. And like, I just miss that experience. Cause you can, you can sit and stream a movie like, like Wonder Woman on HBO max in your living room and, you know, do it from the comfort of your own home and feel safe and stuff. But there's just something about being in that type of environment where you have the smell of the popcorn and you mm -hmm. sit with the big screen in front of me, the huge speakers in a room of in a dark room of people here to enjoy the same experience it's like you can't recreate that so i'm excited for that personally yeah i definitely think that we might be heading towards a direction where big theaters are going away and yeah. all we have left are the smaller ones which isn't bad because i like the small ones because they have like more of those where you can get dinner and drinks um in the theater which is pretty cool well, actually, yeah. I don't know. I think it might be the opposite because a lot of a lot of small independent theaters have actually closed because they're not getting the the amount of financial support from the government. Um, and the, the big mm. businesses are the ones that are getting the financial support, but they're even they're closing theaters. Like there's a cinema yeah. near my place that closed down a couple months ago and like that's huge, you know. Yeah, so I guess it'll be up to who has more money to put those precautions in place, but yeah. I just hope that if it's the big theaters, but they also, I know, I know some of the bigger theaters are starting to do dinners and yeah. drinks and stuff, but um, yeah, I, I definitely miss that experience. Well, if uh, once they start opening theaters and stuff back up over there, how, how long would you guys wait before going to see a movie? Cause like, for example, Godzilla versus King Kong, which the trailer actually dropped while we're recording so as soon as we're done i'm gonna watch the trailer i'm so excited but um mm. that's announced to release on hbo max and in theaters on march 26th so i'm probably gonna go Damn. see that i'm yeah i'm gonna go see that and then there's rumors that justice league is gonna release on hbo max and in theaters as well so if that's in theaters i'm gonna absolutely go see that. is that this year yeah march Ooh. march baby so if oh shit how how soon do you think you guys would feel comfortable with going to the movies it just depends um i would think by then i might be able to get the vaccine already um, you think so gosh i don't know that's pretty soon but because allison's we'll already got it right yeah she got the, the, first, the first one yeah 
Yeah. So. I don't know. I mean, I feel pretty comfortable doing it, but it's up to her. And it also depends on like the, the capacity. If they're doing like really spread out, mm-hmm. um, I wouldn't mind going, but. Well, I know yeah. if you go to like the bigger theaters, even before, way pre COVID, they did the like, you know, you can order online or when you go to buy the ticket, you pick out the seats. And the last time I went to a theater, they, they had like spacers in between rows and stuff. And so I felt, I personally felt pretty safe. Um, I wasn't close yeah. to anyone and I don't, I don't think there would be. I feel like the that. precautions are there. I think, I don't know why things are still closed at this point. I mean, that's all political, but yeah um, yeah it's i'm also, sure if they, if they open they'll have the, the safety in place it's also here's the thing though with with like restaurants bars and and even places like movie theaters if you think about it with a movie you're sitting in, in the same room for about two hours two plus hours in a small confined space and there's no matter where you go there's going to be people who don't follow the mask policy they're going to like take their mask off or whatever for yeah a period of time <laughs> And I think that's where the fear is. It's like, how well or how poorly does this virus travel if you're in this, you know, square footage of a room and someone takes their mask off? Like, am I exposed to it? If I'm sitting in the back corner and they're sitting over there, am I not? Like, I think that's where it really comes in. So that's actually uh, interesting you bring that up because there's this product called the Air Scrubber, which is an air purifier. Uh Um, And when installed to the HVAC system, which delivers, you know, the whole area that you're delivering air to, Uh um, it kills viruses, bacteria, and everything under the sun, um, I think within like 10 minutes or something, or like every three minutes or something. So it depends on who, who is putting money into upgrading their you know, air purification systems, because if you're spread out enough, it'll, it'll neutralize um, the airborne stuff. It just, so if you're you get sitting in a room, and, and for, for our listeners that don't know this, Brandon works in HVAC this way. He's an expert. Um, but so if you're sitting in a room where that, that system's in place, does it not affect you at all? What do you mean? Like if it's purifying the air consistently, if you're saying like every three minutes it'll go and, and kill every bacteria or whatever. I mean, as human beings, we have bacteria inside of us. We have right. you know, stuff in our mouths even. Like, does that not affect you if you're just sitting in a room and this is doing its thing? Does the room have to be empty? Like, how does it work? Like essentially, would it kill the bacteria inside you? Yeah, like would it damage you if you're exposed to it? No, so essentially, like, you would still keep everything inside you, obviously. It just neutralizes and kills the airborne bacteria. And then even the the water droplets that sit on surfaces, Uh that gets killed every 90 minutes. So it just makes it more safe being around other people. So, like, uh, if you cough, it won't make it to, like, the the person sitting over or, like, it won't linger Uh in the air. But then it's it's safe for you to inhale these bacteria killing particulates that's that's what i'm concerned about well yeah because it's it's not dangerous it's um i forget the science it's like uh essentially o2 turning into like co something whatever whatever the science is it's like uh bacteria killing molecules or something that like fights the 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 germ Okay, interesting. I'll, I'll have to look into that. Are you actually installing these right now? Oh yeah, we we install them into um to people's homes, and they just came out with one that's for hospitals. That's a like a rehabilitation type unit, mm-hmm. um, and I think they they got certification for it to be a a treatment plan. Um, oh, shit. So they they're definitely very effective. Um, that's cool. Yeah, that could change things. Yeah, the the idea is that it'll make it a lot more comfortable being mm-hmm. around people that like things are actually getting killed um, yeah. actively instead of people having to like come around and like spray disinfect. Right, because even the thing the thing about you know safety precautions now is like you know people restaurants businesses whatever they can say we go and spray off surfaces and clean them, but I'm pretty sure most of these. 
um, like disinfectant sprays, they require like a 60 second sit time to kill the bacteria. Yeah. And so is it actually doing anything when you're spraying it and wiping it down? Like I, right now I work at a physical therapy clinic and after every, you know, any patient touches any equipment, like I go through and I spray and scrub everything down, but I don't have the time. Like there's no way that I can allow the spray to just sit there for a whole minute. And that's, yeah, that's where I think, I don't, I don't know what the science says. Like if they do tell you, you need 60 seconds for it to fully do its job and you're giving it two seconds before you wipe it off. Is it doing anything? Is it spreading the, the virus part particles around? Like, I don't know. Yeah. I think that's where there's a lot of like, uh, man-made or not man-made, but like man, um, error involved there. Yeah. So huh. I don't know. We'll see how things are doing in March. It could be a complete 80, especially with, you know, how the white house is doing. We don't have yeah. to get too deep into that, but yeah. that's going to change some things. Hopefully we'll, we'll see. I know Dr. Fauci said a couple weeks ago or something, he, he thinks that, uh, 200 million, um, Americans could keyword could be vaccinated by around June, which is a significant portion. Damn. That's like two thirds of our population almost. So that's the thing. It we could be in a good place. We could not be. I guess it depends on how uh, how Biden decides to to do things and how well people mm -hmm. want want to you know choose to take the vaccine or not. But anywho. Um, as far as like any any other film stuff coming out uh trying to think oh there is this movie called the little things i don't know if you've seen the trailer for that it's hmm. coming out the end of this month it's got denzel washington rami malik rami malik and jared leto it looks really good i don't know Ooh, that's a good cast yeah if you haven't seen the trailer you should watch it, it comes out the end of this month but um yeah, I don't remember. I think Denzel plays a detective or cop of some sort, and he suspects Jared Leto to to be the this murderer. But then he like gets acquitted, or there's not enough evidence to convict him or something. So he like, I don't know if he goes after him, but it it looks really intense. Have you been following um, Cherry? That new film coming out with Tom Holland. Uh, I think I watched the teaser. I haven't seen the actual trailer, but. Yeah, when, when directed by Anthony and Joe Russo. Uh, -huh. uh I know that. It, it looks pretty good. I mean, it, it the way that they're portraying it in like their their media, it looks pretty good. Yeah, I I just I don't know the the exact plot though. Anytime I see, I, I think Tom Holland is supposed to be like a he goes to join the military or something, and then maybe he like deals with PTSD or something when he comes back. But anytime I see. Tom Holland with a mustache. I just, I can't do it. Like he looks, he has a baby face. He's always going to look like he's 12 years old. And when he has a mustache, it just it looks awful. <laughs> what? Oh, she just came down. She was listening to a podcast. Oh, nice. Cause she, she listening to our room. podcast. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <Damn it>. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I actually, Kaylee and I just watched uh, <clears throat> The Lost City of Z. Have you seen that one? Got, no, uh, that's the one with, um, what's his face? Charlie Hunnam. Yeah, Hunnam. Hunnam, uh, Robert Pattinson, Tom Holland's in it. It was a pretty good movie. Um, it's on Amazon Prime if you ever want to watch it. But basically, okay. uh, it's based on a true story where <clears throat> um, Charlie Hunnam, he and a couple of his, his like, explorer buddies go and search for el dorado or the the city of gold and then you just you watch him over time like obsess with finding the city and like he like abandons his family and everything and then it's it's really good it's like a good um... i thought it was about the wizard of oz <laughs> no <laughs> oh not quite <laughs> Oh, yeah. shit. I should I shouldn't have told you. You should go into the, the movie with that expectation. You'd be like, "What the fuck am I watching?" I'd be like, wait. <laughs> um, but yeah, at the very end, you you like see Tom Holland get older throughout the movie because he he plays Charlie Hunnam's huh. kid, and at the end of the movie, he has this fucking mustache, and I just cannot take him seriously. Oh no, he looks, he looks so bad. Sorry, Tom Holland. 
You're a, you're an okay actor, well, but I just can't do the mustache. With, with Cherry, all I can keep thinking about is uh, the devil all the time, since that was about the military too. Mm-hmm. I still haven't seen that yet, but neither have I. <laughs> you got to watch it. I hear it's good. Uh, I've been recently. I started rewatching Game of Thrones because oh, I nice. never. We got to like the second to last season, uh-huh. and then never Where watched the last shit. one. <laughs> Returns to yeah, but I mean, like, shit. Game of Thrones with the gap that it has, you would always go into the new season kind of forgetting some of these things that happen because, like, mm-hmm. so much happens yeah. in the in between episodes. So, yeah, there's so many characters. Yeah. What, uh, what season are you up to now? <laughs> Still on one. Oh, okay. Yeah, I that was a series that I, I never actually watched all of. I, I watched season one and two, and I really liked it um i just never got around to watching the rest so that's that's something i'm working towards i'll i'll eventually get have you watched it. any um of the show called barry uh that's with bill it's on Hader, hbo right? yeah i like him it's What's pretty that? good he's uh, like a hitman um but he's trying to like get away from it because he's like depressed he's a depressed uh-huh. hitman uh so he starts like this acting class and it's it's pretty good so it's a comedy? I think. Drama. Yeah. But there's still like cool action involved because he still kills people. Yeah. So it's just weird. That's cool. I, I, I got to check that out because I, just the premise of that, I, I like shows like that where you see a person, you know, kind of like an anti-hero almost if he's an assassin and then <clears throat> yeah. has to deal with the side effects of it. I like that. Yeah. Um, let's see. I, I tried watching stranger things again i only ever watched season one which i i thought was okay i didn't think it was deserving of the hype so i started watching season two hmm. and like i'm two episodes in and i just i just can't get into it like it, for some reason it's just not that yeah. good to me it seems it's very rote like it's not anything new it's not really original so i might give up on that um and uh, to and kind I, of backtrack uh-huh. wait what's up uh, I was just going to say, we, we started watching True Detective, and um, we're on the third episode. That's a really good show. That's really, really good so far. Um, did you ever get far enough into Supernatural to see the Wizard of Oz arc? No. What? Damn. They get into some deep shit. <laughs> they do Scooby-Doo, Wizard of Oz. Like, what the heck? Oh, yeah. Geez. Yeah, I won't spoil it too much. You got to get there. I yeah, I'm I'm gonna get there. We just got to keep uh <laughs> keep it up with our reviews. We're gonna get there on the podcast, aren't we? Together. Yes, we will. <laughs> no, I'll probably. That'll be kind of interesting because we'll see like your your true reactions to things. Yeah, yeah. Um, so maybe the next episode because we do have a lot to catch up on on that show. The next episode we'll we'll dive back into supernatural because. Yeah, We've got a ways to go, but I'm excited. It's a great show. There's not really any other show like it. Um, so, yeah. Anything else? Let's try to. Um, we need to start trying to pre-plan, like at least a reoccurring episode, uh, and like set like a time. I mean, it kind of sucks because I think your schedule is the most variable. Yeah. Well, I, I'm getting um, settled into my job right now, so probably within the next like week or so I should have a fairly consistent schedule and then we can actually it'll make it easier for our listeners um we'll we'll do like you know we'll have a map out for the next month like on this day we're going to drop an episode on and then you know whatever time period after that but okay um what do you think about do you feel inclined to try to finish up the blade trilogy or do you want to to wait for another I'm in. to try to jump back in I think uh, you just want to roll with it, keep going through. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't know. What do you think? Would you rather do like Blade, Supernatural, Blade, Supernatural, Blade, Supernatural, or do you want to go just all three Blades and then hop back and do you know like three episodes straight or something? Yeah, let's just do it. Let's just keep rolling through. That way we can. Okay. We can go deeper into these like continuity things and explore the yeah. the universe more. Actually, before before we commit to that, I want to look real quick 
I don't know if the sequels are on HBO Max. <laughs> this will determine if they're all. They are. They are. Yeah, I I I saw them pop up when I uh, <laughs> okay was watching the first. All movie. right, I was I was gonna say if they're not free to watch, then maybe <laughs> not. <laughs> nope, <laughs> supernatural. All right, well then I guess uh, our <laughs> listeners, you guys can expect um, the next review to be of Blade Two. So I'm excited about it. I don't remember much about. Actually, I don't remember anything about the story. I just remember it being better, and I. Know I don't know anything about Blade Two. Involved. Yeah, it's. I like, don't know. The only thing I remember is Ryan Reynolds in number three. Oh god. <laughs> and that's the only thing that's like sticking out to me. Yeah, Ugh. you're gonna get there one day. <laughs> all right. Well, I think that's that then. Cool. Well. For all the listeners out there, thanks for listening once again, especially if you made it all the way through to the end. We love you for being so loyal. Um, Until next time, stay scary and stay sexy. And feel free to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. We're on all three. And uh, Oh, yeah, hit the subscribe button. I think, are we going to be on YouTube soon? Yes. So this is our second video episode. We're... The thing about our, us doing video is uh, audio quality is, is a little different and camera quality, you know, we need some improvement, but for now we are going to try to to probably consistently do some video so we can, you can find us on YouTube in addition to um, if you just want to, you know, podcast stream us on uh, Podbean, Spotify, Apple, Google, Stitcher. We're on basically every platform. So yeah, we so made much. it. We, we're here. We're famous because of you. <laughs> All right.